instead of being made out of metal, <coughs> is made out of a thermoplastic. And the coolant outlet on the back of it has split longitudinally. So I was driving down the road and blew half the coolant in the car out in about two and a half seconds. And so now I'm struggling to get that off. Tomorrow, to get the last bit off, I have to remove one of the mounting studs, which requires me to get a four millimeter box end wrench. Because that's just a good design. Sounds it. I thought you were going to say the coolant manifold is made out of piss. Uh, the, the coolant is kind of like piss because it's that Dex cool, low sulfur, sh low sulfur shit. So it's kind of like dehydrated, like alcoholism, piss orange. That sounds right. Yeah. You know what Cindy says? She says it's not, says the Saturn is spelled S A D D E R apostrophe N, as in Saturn shit. Yeah. But you know what's not Saturn shit is another episode of the Orville Talk podcast. Is, isn't it though? It, I mean, it's it's Saturn shit that uh, we haven't recorded in like fucking 10 months. <laughs> yeah, almost a fucking year. Hey man, look, it'd it be like that sometimes. It'd be like that sometimes every time. You really do. When the fucking cat wrangler moves away and has a baby, you know. Uh, you didn't have it. I just, I just want, want to clarify. You, you I mean, your, your hips, while definitely birthing style, <laughs> not the thing that birthed them. I mean, it's, it's just been tough for, uh, for them lately. I mean, especially Bonnie having to make breast milk for two now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> definitely puts a strain. Honestly, I'm just impressed that she can still differentiate two percent in chocolate between the two. <laughs> you know. So, I mean, sometimes I get it twisted, you know, just just because it can. Wait, does it? Is it a twist or a can? No, it's like a you know, like a like a soft serve. Like you can get both flavors and just kind of make uh, chocolate no. and vanilla. No, that's just like disrespectful. <laughs> that's like better. <laughs> oh fuck, man! At that point, you're not making milk better; you're making chocolate milk worse. I mean, you're not wrong. Well, I mean, sometimes you got to cut the sweet a little bit, right? Like, no. Sometimes, sometimes you want the, the no. chocolate milk. We're diabetics here. <laughs> Fair. I mean, we're gonna keep that sweet up. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, so it has been a while. Uh, I think tonight we're just gonna just kind of <laughs> shoot the shit generally about heresy and kind of talk about whatever's been living in your head rent-free about heresy for the past year or so uh we're going to talk about uh nova from september and call the arms from last month from october and then whatever else catches our fancy there's been a lot yeah there has been a lot that's gone on since their last yeah recording. there has been a lot that has happened in the entire year since <laughs> Oh We've god, how long? Uh, when was the last one we recorded? It was before muster. Fuck. Yeah, that was, was in February. Was like February. Yeah. Should we talk about muster then? <laughs> I mean, I don't even remember. I it. can't. I wasn't there. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why we enjoyed muster. I know. All right. Well, I, w I was there to give Jack something, I think. But other than that, there was like I don't know. I was delivering something to somebody, or I might have. I was bringing my terrain. That's what I did. I I lent you the terrain to you. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I was just passing through. So, what have you guys been working on? I mean, don't, don't ever want to go at once. once. <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a coke. <laughs> uh, you always talk about how you can't do coke. It's like your favorite no, joke. No, I mean, I mean, you're right. I shouldn't do either types of coke, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Well, uh, since my uh, you know heresy schedule is kind of uh, diminished since the uh, since Call to Arms is fi uh, finished up, um, I've got you know I've got some uh, plans in the works for the next muster that's going to be in february that's basically that that's the the next real heresy event 
Um, Globally, the but, next uh, real one. Oh, yeah, the next, you know, organized one. Uh, well, well, you know, I say that, um, and I haven't even talked to you guys about this yet, but um, I, uh, and I'll go kind of deeper into it, but uh, the background of it, but uh, I got, I was uh, approached by the owner of Tap and Roll. The uh, It's a game store that's based out of Williamsburg. Uh, they had a table at Call to Arms in October, and the owner really enjoyed it. Thought it was a good vibe. Really liked, you know, just the the, the general energy of the of everybody and what we were trying to do. And really like, was impressed by the gamers and seems to be a real community focused uh, couple. And they have um, perhaps a little uh, too quickly. Uh, they have um, rented a small venue. Uh, I think the first weekend of December, and that that's basically it. They they have rented the venue, and then they're like, "Well, if you build it, they will come." I guess. So oh, yeah, I was gonna say, man, <laughs> like if you book it, I will come and probably also attend the event. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where we're at right now. Is like you know, it's not. We've got a small venue, so I'm working out the details of figuring out like, all right, well, realistically, how how big is the place you know what 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 sort of uh you know does it have tables like what do we need uh when could we get into it because it's gonna it, whatever it is it's just most likely going to be a you know one day thing um so uh i talked to some of my guys up in um richmond because i was up there last uh weekend you know stopping by um and I asked, you know, what what's going on? Apparently there is another event that's going on simultaneously, I guess like a yearly apocalypse battle that uh, some of them do. Um so well, I haven't heard anything about that. So well, Yeah, someone told I me you wouldn't. Me. <laughs> well, I hadn't either, but apparently it was just like posted like a, as an event online. I, I I don't know. I still haven't uh, looked at it, but like In fairness, I'm not on Facebook really, so based yeah. So whatever it is, like so. But so I was talking to some of them, and so we might be able to, you know, do something kind of small. I was actually thinking maybe doing a, um, doing like a maybe a centurion event, you know, something that's kind of easy to pick up. Maybe a doubles event so that I could like reduce the amount of, you know, terrain that I need to pack up and and take. Um, but. And it would be in Williamsburg, uh, so I'm hoping that I can get some of the guys from Richmond to come down too, the ones that aren't going to be a part of the APOC. Um, and maybe if we can swing it, maybe that be when we do our, like, um, Secret Santa. Um, kind of double up, you know, so that we don't have to schedule two different time frames. I don't know. It's still very ethereal um, up in the air. Really don't have any details on it yet, so, but that's the that's like the next thing i am working on and then like the next weekend uh odms is running their uh christmas truce which is a one day like gaming mini con uh and my my other group or my group that does the uh the convention uh call to arms we're gonna start doing more organized if gaming events just in general uh so we're gonna do a uh a Marvel Crisis Protocol day uh, where we're going to be running um, what are called Ultimate Encounters. Basically, it's a um, kind of like, like a narrative style event where teams of players go up against you know a, another player doing some of the more iconic battles from the Marvel universe. So, like it's it's not a tournament, so it's a, a little bit low, easier going, lower key, uh, and then like. You, you and a partner would be going up against like you know Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet or Ultron and all of his you know army of drones and shit, um, which is a pretty cool system. I like it, but you know we're trying to run some more you know smaller events throughout the year and not I, just put. I, all... I had heard about that. Like I saw that somewhere. That might be in the. I think we put email or something. Yeah, like yeah. I, I think we've sent it out in an email, and I, we've put it out on a couple of discords. Again, that's still kind of in the works too. So that's that's where a lot of my hobby energy has been going outside of just you know 
working on stuff for myself. Um, sure. her heresy wise, like I've I've been uh, I've put a little bit of work into some of them, the, the Titans uh, since I, I've got a, a a workable maniple now. So now I'm just trying to get some detail on them or finish you know base coating them, working on the the weapons. Um, and I have just today I've been putting together. Uh, a bunch of heroes for MCP, and I put together my starter box for Star Wars Shatterpoint because I got that oh, nice. at Call to Arms. Yeah. Uh, and I let me tell you, if well. you've never put together any of the models from Atomic Mass, they are they're a delight. They are yeah. so That's nice solid. to put together. It actually I pisses did... me off for the terrain how nice it is to put that shit together. <laughs> yeah. I did not enjoy the B1 battle droids, but other than that, they went together pretty great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's... I, I get that, but yeah. Like, all the heroes that I've been putting together for MCP were have gone together really well. They, and their, their, the, their sprue design is really kind of ingenious in a lot of ways. But like, all of the terrain that I've put together has just slotted together, like, very intuitively. Now, there's nowhere near as much ability to customize models like you the, the model is the model like you it, it goes together basically in one way there every once in a while you get some options yeah and that's well, fine like that's it's a I, different i think like they'll re-release them every so often so like you'll get different versions of, like yeah like skins for the heroes so like they're re-releasing the marvel crisis protocol course well or whatever so it's, 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 an, it's an interesting system like that's my that's kind of what I'm into at the moment, just because, you know, I, I, there's really nothing heresy was that I'm really trying to get into. Like, I've got my my solar ox is basically playable or, or is playable. I don't really need to do much with it. And my wolves are where I kind of want them to be other than like fixing and doing detail work. But yeah, so weirdly enough, I've done a, a, a surprising amount of hobby. It's just not all been heresy related. Yeah, <clears throat> I haven't like fully played Shatterpoint, but I've played crisis protocol a couple times and if it's essentially the same game just with a star wars skin on it then yeah that's what i've heard yeah which is better for me because i really could give a shit about the marvel stuff but star wars i'm i'm in i i like both uh, but i will say like from where the the two ranges are like and i was not big on the the cartoons and, uh, and stuff like clone wars and shit um, so there's a lot of characters that are currently out for, uh, Shatterpoint that I really just don't have a connection to. Yeah, like, uh, Savage Opress and, like, the, like, Swamp Witch ladies he's with and shit like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's based, though. He is, he uh, is pretty based. Oh, yeah, no, that's all cool, and I love, I love that. Like, I mean, I'm really excited to see how you. the range expands. But it's just not where <laughs> it's just not where I'm like yeah. super passionate about it yet. Cool. Oh, all right. Well, so uh, Eric, what about you? You've been working on anything? Oh, I've been working on some things. Uh, you know, I did an entire Custodes army since we last met up. Uh, <laughs> brought that you turned, to you uh, turned loyalist. You did Custodes, and then <laughs> were over the Custodes in the time. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. That is basically <laughs> exactly what happened. Um, I started them just based on some online discourse that I'd seen about like, uh, oh, you know, these units, and it's like the all the three up units, and then like the Sentinel Guard, which are the sword troops. So like, oh, these guys like are booty in custodies now where they were at least like the jet bikes certainly were not last edition. I was like, you know what? This stuff still looks like it's going to like, it's pretty decent. And then I found uh, a Vallejo red speed paint. I think it's slaughter red is the name of it. And I was like, you know what? That would probably look really good on custodies too. So I did, uh, I did all that brought it to muster. It did exactly what I wanted it to. Um, you know, just showing that those units are good. Uh, and Wait, was that Muster or Call to Arms that you brought them to? Whatever the last one we had, I don't know what they're fucking called anymore, dude. Um, <laughs> called <laughs> Call to Arms is the one in October. Yeah, Call yeah. Arms. Did I, did I say Muster? Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, it's okay. I Liter time, literally, man. people at the fucking Call to Arms event were calling it Muster. Yeah. Like, so I I, know, yeah, I brought them did. there. It did. They Same did. Location. Good enough. Um, 
I don't really vibe with the whole loyalist shtick. And then the Demons PDF came out, so I'm trying to pass off those guys for things I'm actually interested in. Um, I actually have also leveled up as a hobbyist, I think, in that I've started doing some stuff with oil paints. Um, another oh, yeah. thing I did for Call to Arms, there was an, a Titanicus <clears throat> event, and I decided to uh, do an entire new force for that of Legio Volpa and started using oil washes and whatnot. So I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Yeah, they look good. Yeah, okay. they perform very well. Shocker, too. <laughs> Eric, Eric did another red bike army. Yeah, yeah, I was really yeah. happy that he went out of his fucking comfort zone. <laughs> and it fucking stomps. Even just for the our listeners out there, in case you're wondering, bad custodies units are still better than a lot of other units in the game. Yeah, like yeah. Really if someone are. tells you that Venatari are bad, they have not faced faced Venatari. If they tell you that yeah, they... the current iteration <laughs> of Agamatis are bad, they have not faced Agamatis this edition. Yeah, all they have done is read their rules, and they're probably dyslexic. Like, they are, they're really good. And, and, but, uh, but what I have gathered is that uh, some of the other metas that, uh, from uh, around, like, the, the, their metas, the way that they play in other uh, areas, like, outside of, like, the, what I have seen at Nova, and certainly down here in Hampton Roads, like, they just play so much, I mean optimized all the time oh yeah i mean i'm not gonna point any fingers name any names but some of the stuff i saw at muster not even just that i faced but just that i saw going around i was like or call to arms god damn it um that i, I saw mean, going around as they could have been either one yeah who knows yeah. uh they all look the same in the dark but <laughs> there there was some uh <laughs> some things in there i like good lord this is supposed to be a narrative event you're not getting anything for winning. Well, I mean, Nova Open is supposed to be narratively focused as well, and that's just not how. That's just not how a lot. Of yeah. We are at this point in the. Uh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Well, basically, all I was saying is like we'll get into it when we talk about Nova, but like there's a mm -hmm. lot of that type of play going around. Yeah. No, yeah. Nobody's here to I, make I friends. I, th Jesus I think it's fuck. hard for a lot of war gamers to kind of separate themselves from the like well why would i not take the best thing like yeah. i'm playing a game that's ostensibly competitive because i'm playing against another person so why wouldn't i try to win yeah oh uh, yeah it's not necessary it, but and like it's the other thing too is like sorry i i know i just like cut everybody off that was going to respond to what i said and i'm going to respond to myself uh but <laughs> like Based. I don't know when narrative came to mean like I have to take bad stuff. Yeah, but I think the problem is a, that. Yeah, you're right. That is that is definitely a thing that like is, I think it's synonymous with in some circles. But what I am realizing is that any anything can be explained narratively. Any choice you want to make can be made. It can, you can make it a narrative choice. And there is some book, some explanation somewhere that will back up your claim that, hey, this is just what works. And there are some legions, some armies that their bonuses, the things that make them good are super fucking narrative. Oh, yeah. So uh, our... Listeners may recall, you guys may recall, maybe not, um, when the uh, custom Legio rules for Titanicus were first released, uh, one of the upgrades is just called Elite Magos, and I forget, it, it's been toned down since. I forget exactly what it did, but it made your repair dice really good. And of course, it everyone just, would just I say, oh, it's just added. my guys were like, they were just, you know, the Forge World is really known for its really good tech priests, so they have the Elite I, I Magos. Can't. I can't remember if it was you added plus one to your repair rolls or if you just got plus one server clades to all of your pipe. But either way, or, it's like... Uh, yeah, I don't think way, it was a re-roll. <laughs> yeah, it might have I mean, been yeah, a re-roll. Either, either way, it was good. But you're right. When the That was one... Th I'll be honest, that's one of the things that made me like... Like, I looked at that and I was like, oh, that's really good. I would do that. And then every, I started seeing people like, oh, God, that's super, super broken. And I'm like, okay, maybe I won't do that. <laughs> 
I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pat myself on the back a little bit here about, uh, oh, it means taking bad things, which isn't necessarily true. But, like, I have a, a World Eaters Plasma Cannon squad. It doesn't do a whole lot for me, but there's that one dude in the fucking Black Legion series. Go, uh, they call him the Fire Fist because his hands got blown off by a Plasma Cannon at the Siege of Terror. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll make a squad like that. Yeah. Um, uh, Lee Orvine. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, since then, uh, other hobby stuff. Right now, what I'm working on is I've, I've returned to world leaders and like all my glory. I don't know. I don't know how good this is going to show up really, but I've got a uh, Terminator command squad that I'm working on in like oh, full yeah. bore Siege of Terra corrupted. I've got the old school uh, Forge World corn Terminator upgrade bodies with the bunny ears and the, the tusk heads tusk. and all the yeah, tusky boys because <laughs> tusk heads are the best heads. Um, you would know. <laughs> I would know. So that's because I I'd, I'd originally made a Praetor like that thinking he was going to go really well with Red Butchers with the Berserker upgrade and then I played Red Butchers more and just realized even though I wanted them to be really good still, they just aren't. So, yeah, there, there's my, uh, I went ahead and patted myself on the back for taking fluffy stuff, and then here I am making a command squad that's just in every way better than the previous option. I, I, yeah. mean, I think uh, Red Butchers are tough. Like, yeah. I, I think it's pretty widely acceptable that they're, like, one of the worst, like, Legion tournaments. Sure. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to be doing right after these guys, still talking about you know narrative stuff, is you may be surprised to learn that I currently don't have any bikes in my world leaders. Well, that's about to change because I'm about to make a hey. command squad on bikes with corn uh, juggernauts. Heck yeah. yeah! So hopefully I can have these terminators done in the next week or so. Move on to those guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah! Oh man. So I I suspect I may have to go pick kiddo up here shortly. She may possibly be waking up, so I'll go ahead and jump in here so that maybe if I have to go, then Gray can talk for a little while. I'm just kind of scrolling back sure. through my photos here to see what the fuck I've worked on the past 10 months. Uh, well, hobby oh. <laughs> um, well, I've been working <laughs> on converting and painting a unit of um, often in court for... <laughs> My Blood Angels, which is like their uh, exemplary battles unit. It's like Sanguinius, it's Deeper guy, Police. Right? Um, and I have not finished painting them yet, but they are like, so like half done. And I brought them to Call to Arms, and they impressed me with how they performed. Um, like, you wouldn't think that two up, six up, like, dudes would be that durable, but they seem to hold their own uh and the strength six ap3 power swords seem to do more work than i was really expecting them to be able to. uh so you know that was cool um oh, yeah. i painted a master's piece for the capital palette this year which i painted in about a month before nova and was able to get a finalist pin with it when nice. like painters like Vince Venturella and like Sam Lenz are getting bronzes, like I'll I'll take the fucking finalist pin. Thank you very much. Um, uh -huh. so that was pretty cool. That was the like nice. druid lady on the bright green base. If you guys had seen oh, that, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I have a picture of her in the cabinet at Capitol Palace. She, the base definitely stood out. So I was very happy with how that turned out. Um. Then recently, I've been working on, uh, well, first, uh, Secret Santa projects uh, across time and space. I'm doing the uh, Remembrances Retreat Secret Centurion. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, God, I got to gotta do that, too. <laughs> uh, I've got mine built I'm... and primed. I just need to actually paint it. But uh, I've been working on a couple of Secret Santa projects. Of various types and i'm working on um possibly getting into redoing my luna wolves um because i 
can talk more about this from Nova, but I really enjoyed playing that army at Nova, despite them not kind of playing the way I designed the army to initially, because I designed it for first edition. Um, so I, you know, you want to talk about being narrative, I'm building a pretty much all termite <laughs> Luna Wolves list. Nice. Uh, breachers, vets, and destroyers in termites. Which Neat. We'll see how that does. I don't know how it's going to perform, but it'll be cool as shit. Um, you can't see it behind me because I blurred out my background, but we just bought a new TV and it had this really big, like, cardboard, like, really thick, hard cardboard, uh, I guess, uh, like, insert for the packaging for the screen. And it's like this big, like, three by two big piece of cardboard. I'm like, I'm going to keep this. This seems like a cool base for a display board. God, these kids always, they get these expensive toys and they just want to play with the box. <laughs> so it's like this really big, thick stock cardboard that I will see if I can build a display board off of for the Luna Wolves. Um, if, if that's the route I end up going, actually in the past day or two, I've thought about... Um, just finishing my word bearers finally like we've come full circle where i was working on the word bearers back last time and i stopped working on them and now i'm coming back to working on them again uh partially because i think i've found a list that i'm actually interested in running um and also the fact that i don't have to buy anything for that army it's done at this point like i have everything i need for it i just need to build it and paint it so what sort of stuff are you gonna buy for it <laughs> <laughs> no like i i just built a list out of literally what i had already and i'm like huh i actually like this i think I'm that's not this. how this hobby works and you know it <laughs> well no i mean that's why i'm not working on the luna wolves because i have to buy a bunch more a bunch more bodies for a unit of chieftains i have to buy a bunch of those uh sons of horse upgrades to get the bane strike bolters out of them um i have to buy like <laughs> fucking two or three more termites like it i just don't need to be spending money on that stuff right now so that can be a like that can get pushed to the next project so i'm just gonna i think i might just try to finish up the word bearers to get them on the table because i've got what i need for them but yeah so today i've been like ripping off arms of a couple guys that i had uh that I'm not going to use them that way. So, like, this dude, I just, uh, he had a power ball and I ripped it off and replaced it with a power fist. And I, since I built him, I got the, like, Word Bearers Mark VI upgrade. So he's got that, like, cool demon helmet on it. Oh, yeah. So, like, I popped that off and replaced it. So, like, we'll see how the Word Bearers treat me. Um, I'm going to use the, like, I've got the demon prints, like, the new demon prints from the, Slaves to Darkness box. I'm going to use that as like my Maragall because I don't like the Maragall <laughs> model very much. Uh, yeah, it's oh, a yeah. fairly common uh, complaint. It is a weird like, one. It's busy, but like Man. that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's busy. It is in this case. Looks kind of sloppy, yeah. and I don't think I've ever seen one that it was painted that I was like, oh yeah, that's badass. Like, I don't think the paint job fixes that model, unfortunately. Well, it is also, I think, one of the older uh, heresy models, yeah? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's too. the second there a while. heresy dreadnought, to be honest. What's the first? Raven Guard. Uh, you know what? I, I don't even recall it. It's the, the Raven... one that's got, like, the, like... It's got the tribal chicken, tattoos? Chicken skin, like... Looking but yeah, tribal looks tattoo. Like, yeah, it looks like chicken skin because it's impossible to paint because they did it in like relief. Uh, the parts that you would think would be low are high, and the parts you think would be high are low. So it's not like carved on; it's like molded on, but in a back ass word way. It's really That's, awful. Oh man, if the uh, Forge World website were working properly right now, I'd be able to go take a look. The Forge World website is no longer in existence. Oh. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know if you knew know. that or if you were just being a shit. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Ben? 
Uh, that's that's twice in this cast alone that you have underestimated Eric's capacity for shit. No, I never underestimate him. I, it's his intelligence I underestimate. <laughs> In fairness, he doesn't give me a reason to estimate it very often. <laughs> um, and then last thing is just uh, I was driving around a lot for work on uh, Thursday. And I was listening to uh, Eye of Horus, which is not something I do very often. But uh, somebody was talking about how custodies like kind of piggybacking off Eric a little bit like custodies are bad I'm like okay like so I was thinking about like okay if I was just going to do like an allied detachment oh no they were talking about how you can ally custodies into whatever army like no questions asked but demons you can't do the same thing for traitors I was like huh well, if I did like an allied detachment of custodies what would that look like and I have this stuff which I've been waiting for an excuse to try it's the Green Stuff World Pure Metal Pigment. So it's basically just like gold dust mm -hmm. that you mix into some kind of medium. Uh, it's just a really, really punchy, vibrant, uh, rich gold. So I'd probably do this with like some oil washes and stuff like that and just, you know, do a shield captain and a, you know, sentinel squad or whatever the fuck like the spear guys are. And just oh, yeah. oh, the Guardian Squad, day. yeah. Those are the good yeah, ones, yeah. by the way, the Guardian Squad. Uh, well... You know, yeah, Guardians me, are really fucking good. Call me the power gamer I am, then I guess. I don't know. Uh, here, I'll, I'll uh, ally these uh, custodies in with my uh, Raldoran Solar Marshal <laughs> Blood Angels, because, you know, that's really thematic for Siege of Terra. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, there you go. It's narrative-based. Exactly, dude. Not narrative you know, cringe. Oh, no, it's narrative and based. Yeah. It's narrative cringe. No, uh, speaking of power gamer, Jake... Uh, we were discussing the other day about power gaming uh, on, a, on a, one of our Thursday heresy nights. And uh, I think you might be in the category with me where we would be power gamers if we could roll above a one. You know, we say that and then like I go to fucking call to arms and like make an inordinate amount of five up refractor field saves against Hagen my first game. Like he was like about to like pull his hair out like... How are you uh, making this many five up fucking saves? Like, are you fucking kidding me? And like, uh, I did the you know the shithead artificer armor tanking two up on a sergeant, and like yeah, I yeah. think he tanked like thirty six wounds or something. <laughs> like, it's I don't know, man. Shit. Or like, I'd you know I'd fail one. Look, up, I didn't up, make up, math. Man, I'm go. just I'm just using it. <laughs> so like, I build up all the piss so that I can just like you know get that blow one it into beautiful something. day. Yeah, just, like, blow it on some, like, throwaway yeah. game that doesn't matter, so then, like, the balls are nice and empty to go to the event the next time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, i tell you what, uh, I did the exact opposite. I was playing against, uh, playing against a buddy of mine, the Death Guard, and, um, he had those, uh, what are they, the Death Shroud with the Poison Grenade Launchers? No, oh, the Grave Wardens. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Grave Wardens, Wardens, that's what it is. And I... I started rolling uh, saves on my dreadnought against the po up against those, and on the first twelve saves I rolled, I rolled ones. Yeah. So. Which you also we we talked about this. You also forgot to make him re-roll his successful poison wounds I mean, against your dreadnought, but still, it, that doesn't stop still, you from I mean, rolling twelve ones. Out of like <laughs> out of like forty shots, he had gotten, he was piling in. I think he, uh, I was like, all right, just stop. I'm already, I'm already dead. He had rolled his first, oh, like, two yeah, handfuls okay. worth of wounds. So, like, 24 had already gone through, and he still had a couple dice left to roll. So I was like, all oh, right. Yeah, that, yeah stop. but that he would have had to have re-rolled them is the point. Yeah. Just saying. It doesn't come up very often. To, I don't need, only need to fail seven of them, and I had already gotten 12 ones. And your re-roll... <laughs> Rerolling poison wounds doesn't help that. Does any that, number above seven is a dead. That the the piss was strong with that one, dude. Dude, goddamn. Oh my well, god. That's, that's why that uh, mirror match we did with the fucking oops all terminators list like was both super fun and also super infuriating because it's like. 
all right, when when are we rolling the piss? And my piss all came at the end on fucking leadership checks, like that yeah, yeah. really mattered. And it was like, man, what the fuck? Why why are we rolling twelves now? Like, where the fuck was this with my charge rolls, dude? Like, come yeah. on. We're rolling twos to charge and fucking ten up leadership saves, like leadership checks. I could not roll under an eleven for a fucking yeah. leadership check. Like, Box car damn. leadership check. Damn, should have played Solar Ox. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Should have played Warrior Elite, dude. Yeah, right. Yeah. Jesus. That plus one leadership would have saved my ass. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you know. Mm. I, you yeah, like still that. to this day wish that I could have had a picture of your face that day I came in and faced your solar ox <laughs> or your uh, militia. Yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was I was definitely um, sipping on the smug. Like, yeah. oh, here I got my AP4 mortars for your ass. And you're like, I'm dwarves with three of save. I don't fucking care. Oh, no. I think the, I think the, uh, I think the actual words out of your mouth, mouth were, well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's probably exactly what I said. Yeah. Uh, like, it's the, it's the fucking, fucking Gundam meme. Like, I'm a genius. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genius. Oh no! <laughs> exactly, man. Oh man. So, well, Gray, have you been working on anything? Oh, I've been non. I've been working on more stuff than I have time for. Literally. Uh, so, I have been trying to modernize my Emperor's <laughs> Children lately. Both repainting some of the stuff I have and getting some new stuff. I'll uh, I'll put some. P Send some pictures that we can put in our later finished recording. But, uh, yeah, so I've been working on modernizing my Emperor's Children. Um, oh, we're going to have to modernize well, again now. We'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, which has been adding Lucius. I've built a unit of uh, inductive to spoilers that Ben was kind enough to print out for me. Uh, they look really fucking good. They got charitable tabers all around. I was really happy with how those tabers came out. Yeah, which is definitely an underrated uh, weapon. I feel like. You know, someone. Uh, I, I was. Uh, I stopped by the uh, Games Workshop today, uh, and there was a Heresy game going on, and um, yeah, the. Uh, the and not only that, but it was a fucking white scars player on top, and uh, he had a really lot of today, Ben. Huh. As a real fucking unicorn, you saw that. I know, and he was playing. Uh, he had uh, Charnable Tabars on a lot of his uh, models. Based. Yeah. I'm telling you, Charnable Tabar is the new meta. Get on board, kids. You heard it here first on the Argle Talk <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Strength Listen. six, AP dash shit. <laughs> breaching yeah, breaching six. six. Yeah, he. I mean, he put in some work, but it was the Strength six. The uh, they. That high power just, you know, making it very reliable to wound. Yeah. Yep. But, like, no. But, no, it's fun to watch. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I was like happy our, to watch uh, it. Not like our Power Lance episode. It's actually a usable fucking weapon. Yeah. Uh, lances are very much usable. Now, yeah, Jake, not what are you talking about? Fucking episode. Um, I've also, uh, let's see, what else did I put in? I, uh, I'm still slowly plugging away in the background on my Night Lords. Uh, the goal is to not make a, the exact same Terror Assault list that everyone who's ever played Night Lords ever has made. Um, so I will specifically not be taking Terror Squads on my Terror Assault. I'll pitch you. Um, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's we'll see if it works out for him. <laughs> no, yeah. No, uh, no Terror Squads. All lightning claws on the raptors. Yeah, so there's no, no terror, no terror squad. It's still night raptors. Oh well, yeah, I mean, the don't theme. terror squads get a bonus from terror assault? No. I mean, they're true, but, but, but so are night them. raptors. Yeah. Well, that's it. Mm. All the lightning claws, none of the terror. It'll be great. I look um, forward lords, to all the lords, none of the night. Right. I look forward to not wanting to be a part of that bullshit. <laughs> all edge, no point. It's gonna be a great list. The pizza cutter. 
pizza cutter Batman fucking Night Lords. <laughs> uh. And then besides from that, I've been working on um, a demons list as well. Uh, and I was able to uh, get some uh, decent swarm models here that I'm using. Uh, I didn't want to use Nurglings, and I didn't want to use, what are they, Brimstone Horrors? Is that what they are? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ancient ones. Yeah, both Ooh, of those suck because Slanesh forever. So. So do you despite, just have like a bunch of little dicks on bases? Yeah, this, despite continuous, I was going to say, everyone's saying I just, just get a pile of dicks printed. I didn't want uh, to have a pile of dicks, so instead I have a pile of dick shaped snakes printed. Okay, that's the same fucking thing, Gray. No, 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 but these are, these are better. <laughs> Some of them I don't know hoods. how, but they are better. Some of them have hoods, so they're not all circumcised. You don't need to even print them off. Ooh, you just need topical. to go on the Kingdom Deaths website and buy a few of those models. There's piles of dicks all over the fucking place on that. Probably. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not probably. Like, I'm telling yeah. you. Like, you can buy piles of penises on that fucking website. I know you can buy, like, uh, you know, you can send someone a bag of dicks. But That's I also intend to... true. I intend to send across the table 20 uh, 40 millimeter bases full of dicks at people. And, you know, so the, really the only thing left for me to do is to get um, multiple um, boxes of the two newest Keeper of Secrets uh, models that GW makes. Now, are you getting the actual Keeper of Secrets or are you getting like the special character one? So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to get the one that's where you can build a Keeper or Shalaxi. I'm going to get okay. two of those and just build one of each. Yeah. And then where it's the two sisters, Dexesha and whatever the other one is. The the, the, the character Keepers. Where they yeah. come in the kit. Mm -hmm. Just get two of those and build one each of those because I need two Behemoths or and two Sovereigns for my list. So at the risk of power gaming, which it's definitely power gaming. Well, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, but I'm refusing but, uh, to use psychic powers in that army. So. Based, I right, fair. I think, uh, according according to some that you might hear on the internet, uh, you should power game with demons because that's all they have going. But uh, you know, we'll get to that. I don't think I agree with that. I don't I either. You, but that's have... what you would hear on the internet. That's what I'm saying. I will tell you that I have... The internet also uh, tells me that there's loads of hot women in my area that want to meet me. They want to fuck. You are the stepson collector, Ben. There are loads <laughs> of single moms in your area, buddy. Yeah, you, yeah. For the yeah. low, low cost of some freeze pops and a baseball glove, you could be knee-deep. <laughs> knee, literally knee-deep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, uh, Gray, with that, do you want to roll on into your pick slash piss of the week? Because I feel like it's going to be tangentially related. Oh, yeah. So my pick slash piss of the week slash year. Um, yes. Piss, piss. Oh, that's true. We got to do a piss of the year, dude. Like, this is. Oh, I mean, mine, mine still is. <laughs> mine, mine has not changed. <laughs> So, uh, both pick and piss, um, and I'm going to do this on the model only, actually, although I could go into rules and really wax on, but I feel like I'm going to steal someone else's thunder if I do, is Fulgrim Transfigured. Uh, rules of the model. Model. I'm going to go model, model only, only, apparently. I could do it on rules, but I feel like that's overlaps with what we'll hear more of in this episode. So just going on model alone, um, it is a beautiful model, a really beautiful model. It is not, what is it, $270 worth of beautiful. Or yeah, something that's, that's sli true. it's slightly smaller than the Angron they put out, and that's what, a buck seventy. Yeah. It's slightly yeah. smaller than that. It's also basically impossible to transport. Like, yeah, you'd have to you'd probably have get to a have full a metallic box. case and then put no shelves in it and just stick him to the bottom of it with magnets. But then again, like, I, I 
I hear you and I agree. But at the same time, do not people do that for their like Titans also? Like, let's be real yeah. here. How yeah, many I mean, times are you actually using Fulgrim transfigured in a given year? And does he not deserve his own carrying? I mean, and I get that, but I don't know. I, I feel like the way and not to get into rules. Apparently, we're not supposed to talk about rules right now. But uh, apparently, the way those rules are written, they want you to use Fulgrim Transfigured a lot. Yeah, you know, I really can't leave the rules alone as much as I want to. Yeah, uh, his rules suck. Um, <laughs> there's just no array around it. Um, uh, his rules suck. The Legion Hereticus Emperor's Children are markedly worse than Emperor's Children Astartes. I don't know if I agree they with that. Just, they only exist to sell him, and I'm not sure why. But it is a beautiful model. It's probably my favorite model they've done in about a decade. Yeah, dude, and that model fucks, like, in all senses of the word. It, it, as far as in the yeah. range, it's probably my favorite model they've done in a decade. But that's going to be a horror to transport, and it's not going to be super fun on the table when he's like, yep, I brought him, and now he's just sitting in the open doing nothing on his Dude, coming all, in. All the all the base Emperor's Children players that buy that model need to have some kind of, like, gold inlaid purple box with, like, a little velvet cushion inside of it upon which to put him and transport him. Oh, man. Him. Why, why, like, why do you think he's just going to sit around doing nothing? Uh, well, the right of wars that bring him in he comes in and he just like he's not gonna be able to charge off of coming in he's just gonna come in and sit for a turn can you not start him fire. on can you not start him on the, uh, the table right well the right in the in the right. one there there's one yeah. that you bring him in like maruskara style except you use a another unit as like the table edge but because it's not, you know, an outflank or a deep strike that specifically allows you to charge out of reserves, there's nothing to indicate that he can do so. Right. It would appear that he can't. Like, I don't know, I feel like... I'm not sure that he's better than the Fulgrim we already had, because the Fulgrim we already had was pretty... Fulgrim at home was pretty good. I don't know, we, we were actually talking about this before uh, we started recording, because uh, I was like, I don't know that he's worth 175 points more than regular Fulgrim. He only gets plus one strength, toughness, wound, attack... Oh, man, maybe he we is actually, actually worth <laughs> that much. He goes so much faster. Yeah, but he has... Um, regular Fulgrim has Fleshbane. I feel like if I'm you're bringing you... a Primarch, you're frequently bringing that to a Primarch fight, and Fleshbane is a touchy thing for Primarch fights. I mean, that's not no. universally true, but... Well, yeah, I mean, is most stuff you're putting him into not already getting wounded on a 2 anyway? Especially if you uh... get the fucking, like, strength 12 fucking hammer blows or whatever the fuck he gets. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I think... I don't, like I said, he's a lot of... That's a lot of fucking points. A lot, a lot of, of points. points. I mean, by definition, you have to uh, run that in, what, at least a 3,000-point game? No, no. He, he fits in a 25. He can play in 2,500. I, I think the thing that... I, I never remember if the rule's 20% or 25%. Yeah, it's 25. 25. But I think okay. the thing that really like sets in that I really like is... Again, something that's super thematic that you see in some of the novels. But the fact that if he is wounded enough, he can just take his ball and go home and you get no points for destroying him. Yeah, that's Which awesome. I know of you one game just... that happened recently that that would have made a huge difference. <laughs> to be fair, in that game, regular old Primar Fulgrim at home absorbed like 24 melt the shots and two ranks. Two rounds of Vanquisher cannon shooting at him. Yeah, all right, and he still pulled. died when he yeah. didn't need to and gave up, like, nine points That's when fair. he didn't need to. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like, yeah. Price of failure. As, as sad as that was, I mean, Legate Marshal Giant Cock Hard Dick is still going to be the, 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 the winner of that fight. <laughs> Gigantius <laughs> Cockatus. 
that yeah. he like lasted in combat against Lucius and Fulgrim for like two combats. Yeah, like two Absolute full monster. turns too, wasn't it? Yeah. I think I think he died at the end of the second full turn, but yeah, still so like, like three or what, two or three rounds of combat. Yeah, the fact that he just kept getting away you, with you, it. Your your boys on par with fucking uh, DNS Chain being like the only mortal in Black Library canon to like score a hit on a Primarch. Yeah, no granted doubt. it was Alfarius who's you know canonized a you know manlet, but still. <laughs> when will they learn? That's probably, yeah. That that beats my previous most uh, durable mortal I'd ever had on the table. I played um in first ed. I played a ZM game against Charles with my uh, militia, and by herself, my um, planetary overlord survived like four rounds of combat against a Terminator Praetor and a Terminator Command Squad, and they just yeah. could not bring her down. She ended up killing the Praetor. Well, they love they, it. You used to be able to give them a three three up invuln and a paragon blade, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it was like it was like three up invuln, three up armor. Uh, I mean, I guess you still five, technically can do that. You just have to build completely for it. But yeah, it's... yeah. It's just wrapped in so many bubble wrap saves. I just waited for him to fail armor saves on his side. Yep. It was a our game was astounding. Like I had, I had so few ways of like really winning and it I mean I was terrified of that squad with Fulgrim. I was like all I got is guns. So <laughs> they don't work talk... in close combat. Please get away from me. Wanna talk about picks of the year, man. Fucking Chlamydia Vanquisher cannons hurt real bad. Like goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Vanquisher cannons might be my pick of the year. Goddamn dude. <laughs> Vanquisher cannons are so good in an army that desperately needs them. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, we, I mean, I got... we talked about this at Call to Arms, but I was like, yeah, there's a reason that I've got fucking four of them in my Mostroyan list. Like, fuck, man, they need it. Like, how else are mortals going to deal with a fucking dreadnought? Oh, I'll tell you, you what, know, I, yeah. I played uh, Solar Ox and my Custodes once, and those Vanquishers were definitely the yeah. MVP of that army. They usually yeah. are. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the I, I love the Solar Ox. I enjoy playing them like I they're way harder to win with. So I do like really like I feel good with those wins. Like, guys, I, it was it was mortals like I, I, I had to have done well if I won with mortals. Come on. Um, yeah, no, but uh, Take your ass yeah. off, man. and but, even with that nine point swing, it was still like a one point game. I think one or two point game. Yeah, it, it it was real close. I I think that we ended up counting some stuff that wasn't like we weren't technically supposed to count, but like it didn't matter. Like it it by the end of the game, basically all I had left were the tanks, and fucking like I had like maybe one or one and a half squads of Volkite guys, but the Volkite guys did fuck all. No, they just... like. Over and over had, again, just piss. Yeah, I had four squads of dudes who could not. not wound. Yeah, it didn't do wounds it's at real all. Sad that militia can out Volkite Solar Ox now. Like, it's it's. Really I crazy. had more. I had more kills in close combat with those guys than I than I did with the uh, the guns at range. That, yeah, because yeah. that's, that's yeah, like man. I put a I put a Carnival uh, glaive on uh, all of the sergeants, and then there's the uh, the murder strike, uh, like the breaching axe or whatever. So yeah. I was able to kill a couple of odd guys. Yeah, the um, Volkite uh, is not as good as everyone says. I feel like, but yeah, honestly, no, not, I don't even know if they say it. I think they just really want it. People stand Volkite. I, I think Volkite is out. better than but. Bolters. But that doesn't make it a really good weapon. Uh, I mean, yeah, but no one... The problem is is that Bolters are just a good, like, baseline weapon. But Volkite's not good enough to, like, be your shtick. And that's what uh, the Velotaris are. 
Yeah. Like, that, that is their shtick. Like, haha, we've got Volkite, but we're still, we still have a, you know, a four up armor save and no ability to take a apothecary or a Medicaid and a vehicle to get us anywhere in. Also, okay, we're so, heavy, so we can't run. So here's a question for you guys Do you think that no, I try not Volkite, to. Volkite chargers should be a free swap for bolters? Yes. I think you should get points back for taking Volkite charges. <laughs> right, I don't know about that. I mean, they're no, still strength guy, five. Like on, no, well, the problem is, is like it, it also depends greatly on uh, who you put it on. That's that's kind of the right. point I was trying to make. Like, you know, on a mortal body, like they're like yeah, they are they're better than a bolter on the same body, and on a marine. That same Volkite would be better than a Bolter, all other things considered. But the the Marine has more to fall back on than the Mortal does, so the Masked Volkite just isn't enough. Yeah. Well, I don't know that I, uh... I I feel like it should be, because okay, so let's let's look at other like I, I know we're kind of going down the rabbit hole on this, but like I I have thoughts about Volk. <laughs> We know uh, that you want you want everyone to accept Volkite so that your yeah. bullshit heavy support squad okay. is not maligned. Lord Volkite lives. Volkite. Uh, so let's look at you know other things that get a free swap for things is, is often a heavy flamer, right? You can often sure. swap yeah heavy a bolter heavy for heavy bolter flamer, for heavy yeah. flamer, or a bolter for a flamer, and like tactical or like tactical support squads just come with flamers, flamers. standard, yeah, like. The the double shots and the assault and the higher strength of the bull kite, yes, but you are also sacrificing a good amount of range. And then a lot of things that are just taking bolters standard can have things like like if you look at tactical squads like in Fury, which they can't do if you swap to bull kite. Yeah, fifty. Well, fifty. Yeah, that that's a huge detriment on the Velotaurus because a fifteen inch range pretty much guarantees you're going to be having to fight something close up right and you they do not have enough survivability for that right which no, i'm on calibers they'd be all that would be all right yeah that's a different I, game i would yeah. love that would be they they need to go up in points a little bit but yeah that'd be phenomenal like in in my luna wolves list i have two squads of breachers and termites as my like core like troops for that army and they're all so See, I tried to get, I'm going to tell you for the points I tried for a full year and a half to make ultramarines breachers with Volkites work and I was having them shoot things at, at they were the two on the one two punch so they were hitting on twos and I still I think I did one wound in like a year and a half <laughs> a year and a half well, so I think Medusa and Immortals come with them stock too. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, but Immortals. I, the problem are is, immortals, it's what you're so. shooting at too, man. Well, like, yeah, the, just everything's super durable. I mean, the majority of what you're playing what against you're, is, you know, armor three up. So if you're shooting against like T-shirt guard. Volkite is the better weapon by far. But yeah, when when all of the things being equal, you're in a power armor environment. Paying for Volkite is cringe. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, bragging about, oh, this is a good weapon for punching down. Like, well, okay. Like, you're still playing you Astartes down? against mortals. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. I stay, that said, I still wouldn't consider that book or those armies to be, like, piss of the year. No. Yeah. Nah. I, however, I, I will think, say, like... Uh, I, think, yeah. I think piss of the year has probably got to be the despoiler arms. <laughs> those make me fucking angry like they make so many good choices and then they make some real fucking dumb ones like so i actually so, so I, the reason i went to the games workshop today is i had a question um so a couple weeks ago when they announced it i was actually super excited they put the uh the rogue trader book for on like print on demand I was like, fuck yeah, I've been wanting that just for the collection for a while. Like, I've been looking on eBay for it for probably two years. And, like, it's always, I, there's always copies. I just can't force myself to spend 
two hundred and fifty bucks on a goddamn book. Um, but so it went up, and I bought it, and it's going to take a while. But then, what is what may be the piss of the year is a few days ago they updated the damn website, and it's a massive downgrade just across the board. Yeah. There is nothing that I have seen that I think was an improvement. The, the 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 idea was supposed to be that all right everything Forge World was gonna like go over into you know now Warhammer dot com, um and so Forge World is now like the the website web store is no longer a thing, so they've been having integration problems, like for you know the last week, they can't they haven't told me where the my my credit on my account is located like it's not there like I can't find it. Um, so I've ostensibly lost 35 bucks, no, that's... uh, and it's harder to find shit on the site. Just, it, it, it boggles me, like, who signed off on this? Why See, are you, why are they making bad choices like this? Like, this is, making it more difficult for people to find and purchase your items just seems like a bold move. So you know that, like, having Forge World and you know regular gw stuff together on the one site some poor fuck who is completely unprepared is going to accidentally buy something forge world not realizing it's going to be forge world resin and all he has is plastic glue and it's well, he's going to have a bad time this might be a stupid uh, question but is it still forge world anymore or uh, does the yes. online site means that they've now combined the divisions? No, they've not combined the divisions. From what I understand, they've not combined the divisions. They are still separate, um, and they they each have their their individual marching orders. But this was meant to streamline the purchasing pipeline so that you didn't have to go to two different places to support the same hobby. Which, you know, I get that. Like, I'm for that. And to your point, Eric, like, this hobby already kind of you know, punishes you for being ill-informed to begin with. So that's, uh, that's kind of par for course if they buy the wrong stuff. Now, they do, um, they do put on all the Forge World kits because they're resin and therefore a bit harder to work with than plastic. They do have a thing in the description about, like, this is, like, a master hit. Yeah, that implies they're going to read that, which, like, yeah, it's on there, you know. If you don't read that, it's a skill issue, but having it in a a whole other website, I feel like that worked. As as a lawyer, as long as it's in the disclaimer, you're good. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yeah. I mean, mean, it, it, it was no different than when they had, you know, fine cast shit. So I'm sure that they will have some sort of notification on there to say what the material is. Sure. Yeah, I mean, reading the prime print is essential. I hope that this isn't a lead up to them combining the two divisions because I think that would be bad overall. I don't know. I don't. Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, because I mean, what is the degree of separation now really doing functionally? That's all behind closed a, doors anyway. I think it's a manufacturing thing because you maybe. Get, way fewer casts out of resin molds than you do out of injection plastic molds. But they're also and a fraction of the fucking cost and the complexity. Yes, but it's also, they're, I think they're going to leave, because I mean, like, what do they, what does Forge World make? They make like, small resin upgrades and like single figures and stuff like that. Yeah. Which, like, uh, which, a, you know, a fraction of a fraction mm-hmm. of of their customer base is ever going to actually buy. Like, I mean, sure. they're mostly making Necromunda and Blood Bowl shit now. Like, yes, they still make some heresy stuff, but like... I mean, they've got a really massive... Like, that character series is ginormous. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I do have so. a piss of the year separate from that, by the way. Go for it. It is what it is. Show us your piss. <laughs> piss of the let year. Us, let us drink deep of Grey's piss. And I think... I think everyone's going to agree with me. It's absolute dog piss that we have um, assault squads for um, Legione's Imperialis game. And we don't fucking have plastic assault squads for um, Heresy. Well, no, we don't. The spoiler, the spoiler arm still. No, we don't have them yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's hard to, like, the, the absence of something 
is not piss in and of itself. The fact that it showed up in a new game entirely, the design and put together for an all new game. I mean, it has it shown up this yet? Game. Yeah, yeah, we still we still don't have those yet. those plastic ones for Imperialis well, either. Yeah, and you know what else was a bold move? They when they showed off the uh, the starter kit for Li, and it includes a solar auxiliary unit that does not fucking exist. Oh yeah, the heavy sentinels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, and not Those only that, but high, in their high. infinite wisdom, when they did that, they released like a schematic drawing of the heavy sentinel, like a front and a side view of it. So within like 48 hours, 3D modelers had already gotten like legit, like one to one designs of it. Which I mean, yeah. I guess if they don't plan on making that into a heresy kit with rules anyway, then I mean, what do they care? Uh, you know, you say that, but they've been on a war path. I mean, they go on sprees every once in a while where they've got, you know, cease and desist orders going out for people like sure. which it's surprising to me that they would do that considering like all the chapter house shit. But yeah. maybe well, in their yeah. minds, like, no, no, we do make a model for it. But and, it, and there aren't any there She's aren't any small. rules for it. Some of the claims model, they make, if you read their the market yet, their some of the rules some of the claims they make on their um, IP strategy thing that they have on their website are just bupkis claims too. Most I mean, of it is just scare tactics. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, that's all. They make ways. claims they could not make stand up in court. They're just betting that you won't take them to court because yeah. they have more money than you. I mean, yeah, that's a reasonable strategy. But like that, and like the. I don't know the the uh, the book that Fulgrim came in. That's pretty piss. That's to me. That's pretty piss. Like you've just taken a bunch of free PDFs and turned it into a book you're p spending you know fifty sixty bucks on whatever oh, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. So so this is my piss of the year, right? This exemplary battles book part one, mind you. Not even so they didn't yeah. even take all of the free pdfs and copy paste it in there they only did yeah. yeah three of them or four yeah three of them and then they arbitrarily gave salamanders another one like okay sure but so not only is this thing copy pasted like down to the it's copy pasted down to the formatting right so it's not like they even yeah. you know rearranged it so that you have all your nice lore stuff up front and then, you know, all your, you know, crunchy rules and missions and whatnot in the back, they literally just put the PDFs one after another so that you have lore, then unit, then mission, then lore, then unit, then mission. Yeah, and and uh, none of it's changed. There, there are two units in there in particular that I think needed something, uh, the, specifically being the Atramentar and the Red Hands, and there, nothing changed about them. No points, costs, no stat changes, abilities, think, anything I like that. I think some of the options on the Atramentar changed a little bit. Not they enough not to fix Atramentar. <laughs> Let's see. There's still yeah, think... there's still two twenty and thirty five points per model. I think the only thing that changed on those they could take double lightning claws now. But I may be wrong. I'd have to look again. I don't, yeah, they, I don't they, recall, but I remember reading, like, someone was making comments about it. I think the funny part is that the typos from the original PDF... Oh, yeah. There is still an unnecessary book. comma in the harrowing rule for Ultramarines, Nemesis. Yep. Like, that, that's the only one that I, like, really delved into and noticed. Yeah, read, read the harrowing rule and tell me that comma deserves to be there. <laughs> Hey, read, it's read that unit entry and tell me that unit deserves to be there. I think Nemesis. Damn. Why would you say Damn. something so controversial yet so true? Why are Nemesis you are booing terrible. me? I'm right. They're a bad unit. Eh. I, I, like, so I, I've got to reread. First ed, their first dead one was great because it was like yeah. a rending six up fucking bolter. Yeah, it was like a cool specialty bolt, and now it's like, hey man, you want to play 40k in your 30k? Yeah, here, sure? here take a morale check sure? when fucking stubborn and fearless is like just as common as it fucking ever was. 
Okay, yeah. yeah. So, hold on. So, the uh, Atramentar, they are now able to take two Lightning Claws for 10 points rather than 15 points, and a single one is free instead of five points. I almost feel like this is worse because, because they, it means they, they, did, it means they it. did go in there and change things. They <laughs> knew that something needed to change, but they just completely just, missed on what it is that needed changing. Uh, what, what's, his nuts from, chose. what's his nuts from the lizard? I'm going to quote him here. You think you want that, but you don't. You think you want weapon skill five at your mentor, but you don't. We actually play tested it. it. Like it breaks the game. Like it's uh, literally unplayable. If we don't. We don't know what it is. Off. The game just doesn't compile. It just, you just can't play yeah. it. <laughs> it doesn't I compile. just remember that one game we played, like early edition. I think you struck down, deep struck down with like a fifteen or twenty man at your mentor unit right in front of my Ralderon Crimson Paladin. I think yeah. first they got intercepted to absolute fuck. Yeah. And then they got absolutely fucking dicked on. And yeah. I think I was running Solar Marshall at that point. But yeah, it, it didn't matter because Paladins are already five, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it didn't got, didn't change anything. I think range smacked the piss out of them too. Oh, yeah, they did. No, the I, only thing in Night Lords that isn't scary is fucking Atramentar. No, yeah. I got, uh, I played a, a Night Lords player at Nova this year and uh, it charged that we were as an objective game and I held the objective with a unit of, you know, a, a slightly large, I think it was a 15 man unit of Grey Slayers with an apothecary. And um, he charged them and I like, I didn't do a lot of damage back, but I also didn't get swept by an equally sized unit of Terminators. Terminators. Yeah. And I really, I really should. I should I have really been should have. chased right off. But yeah. I, but I didn't. So, yeah, no, I wish that they had gotten something. It was like, and it, yeah. they, they should have. They should have gotten. They should have gotten a points decrease, uh, so that you know, qu you know, quantity is a quality in some cases. Yeah, I mean, sure, so, you can already take a huge mass of them and pay through the nose for that pleasure for yeah. like, like a relatively affordable brick of twenty fucking terminators that can deep strike, dude. That's fucking horrifying in some in some cases. Yeah, or you know, did they get a bonus to like their, you know, protections or something whenever they deep strike? No. Okay, because like like I know, uh, I think Justerin do. Um, or Abaddon maybe the help. And I was about to say that may just be Abaddon. So, so Abaddon, I think his, him and his unit get like a shrouded four plus on the turn they deep strike. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, so between that so, and the red hand still effect. being prohibitively expensive to give any weapons to on a weapon skill four one wound unit, like yeah, when they first came out in first edition, it was two points a model for for all the like meteor hammers and shit. Which yeah, that might have been a little too cheap, but fifteen points is the price but of the those, guy. Those those weapons were pretty dog piss. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they were also yeah, they're also really like they're good yeah. now. But that's an entire model that you have to pay yeah. for to give. Like, it's 15 points a guy and 15 points for a weapon. Yeah. On, yeah, again, a, a weapon skill four, one wound, three up save. It's yeah. just, it Basically, this, this book says to me that someone in the design team said, you guys are not allowed to give Fulgrim's rules for free. Do something. Also, sun killers aren't in the fucking book. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they took out. To yeah, they don't. I mean, they don't. Yeah, they don't need to be. Like the rules still exist. That's the thing. Like the rules still exist, gonna, and were they were haven't changed. Book. Yeah, and they, yeah, they should still have the Emperor's Children one in the Emperor's Children book. Yeah. But yes. So I assume later on they'll have a Salamander's book that has two <laughs> Emperor's Children in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the other well, thing, too. You know it's what? like, we just arbitrarily decided to give Salamanders another unit, which, okay, I guess those guys need anything they can get at this point, but it, it was a bit of a weird about, choice. We were talking about those guys I need before. a playable fucking independent character, but... we started. I think before we started recording, we were talking about these guys, where they're basically, like, vets plus with breaching rotor cannons, which, like, is cool. 
but yeah, it's a weird choice. Okay. Well, now, now that I read them again and like a little bit more critically, um, like okay, they're fine. Like yeah. yeah, they're like I would probably always use them over vets in uh in my salamanders, but they don't do a whole lot that makes them really unique kind of makes me question like just why did was the effort made to make yet another unit they're not far and away different they don't fill a a, a slot that wasn't already filled yeah and it's, it's like yeah the adherence squad that they had originally wasn't that good but like a lot of these units aren't that good and yeah, the, haven't yeah. got anything where's the, else. Where's the space wolf replacement for the fucking double hand flamer? Fucking yeah, uh, the yeah the space wolf one sucks. Which like, like I mean you know you you kind of had that one coming. Let's be honest, but no, hey, space wolves no, already are, have no. the worst unit in the game. Yeah, they already gave me the worst unit in Heresy. I they they could have given me a, just something that didn't have to be great just had to be a little bit better had to be playable i think it's tied for the worst unit in the game no 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 you, hold on We're, what do, okay so first off i'm talking about fenrisian wolves yes they are the worst in i uh, tell me who you think is as bad okay the only thing that makes them tied is because fenrisian wolves are far and away cheaper than fucking attack bikes no fuck that i would rather take at least uh -huh. they can they don't actively make a good model worse. I don't know. They, uh, they, brother they're is my turn with the wound. Their own. For 75 they, points, no, it's pretty fucking bad. No, they, what, what about assault, the uh, attack bites suck by themselves. Killing itself every single time it fires. <laughs> Look at man. The attack bites are terrible. 75 points for brother, may I? Have the wolves, like please. the the Fenrisian wolves have to be taken with a, a, a an HQ model, and they it, it makes them easier to wound. Yeah, because they're toughness three with no save. Yeah, yeah. no is save. This, is this a book unit or is this a PDF? It is a PDF. It's unit. a PDF unit. Okay, maybe this is why. But well, just like Sun Killers, like they're all, they're all tough three at what it's <laughs> Uh, they're, not, just, they're not getting a melee with any rad. I, 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 like they're <laughs> they're a unit that I just do not understand. <laughs> like tactical marines. Like they were fine in first ed. I do not understand why uh, they, they couldn't have just. They could have literally like copy pasted that, or the 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 word or the instructions from first ed and they would have still been playable yeah. basically they were just a war gear option for your hqs that and you could take two of them and they would attach to any squad that the independent character attached to that's it and they were just they were just some toughness three like ablative wounds and a couple of extra attacks that's it the emperor created Fenrisian wolves to keep space wolf players humble <laughs> <laughs> so instead i just never take them and still dominate regardless yep. you know what the, the final hurdle is to take them and defeat another defeat a primark with them i have i have have i not done enough to you gray <laughs> are you not yet entertained i am not i i saw how close you were to tears i saw it <laughs> you know, no. I actually really wasn't mad about that. I know you now, are. It was did, still. Did it was quote funny. from I Man mean, Mad. Did, did, did his <laughs> voice increase in pitch by about two octaves as that combat was going on? <laughs> no, no, no worse. He just got quiet, just very <laughs> quietly. Like, it is what it is, big man. <laughs> big <Big-o. laughs> I did say it is what it is a lot. It is fucking dose of copium. <laughs> it is what it is, big man. I said that a lot. That's fair. <laughs> God damn it! I don't know if that's worse or me fucking dog whistling all of tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, man. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't have gotten a finger up your ass that day. You were. <laughs> I don't think. I think the maddest I've seen Jake get was where I um did the uh hold the line failed the check, ran away, blinded you, and then charged in and killed you with that same squad. Yeah, well, that, yeah that, was, that was another, that was another fucking, like, 
goddamn race to the bottom playing fucking gray. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I have no the idea. Man King get deceptively high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> I, I do have, I do have the rage screech. Uh, yeah. Roll a bucket of ones, because of fucking uh, course they do. Uh, yeah, like yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, why, why would they roll higher? <laughs> why would they do that? <laughs> fuck me for thinking they could. <laughs> yeah. I, I enjoy. Know. I well, fuck if I know Bonnie. I'm just a lawyer. I don't know how to roll dice. Look, man, at least Jake's dozer blades work. I didn't go to work. law school because I was good at math. <laughs> the, the amount of times that I have been witness to Eric rolling snake eyes on fucking dozer blades is uh, astronomical. <laughs> and like, <laughs> my favorite part of it is that, that we both see it simultaneously and <laughs> we just kind of lock eyes for a split <laughs> second. <laughs> Afterwards, like no. <laughs> if you go frame by frame, you can see the exact moment my heart rips in half. Uh, well, so so to get us out of the realm of piss, let's uh, let's uh, go to another pick. I've got a pick of the year. I yeah. Guess, at this point, uh, please. I'm going to pick the. Uh, um, well, I was gonna pick the the demon PDF, but I think uh, somebody else is gonna talk about that. But. In the alternative, let's talk about this fucking Mark III kit, my guys. Yeah. This this, this shit slaps. No, those this heads are terrible. Kit is fantastic. Okay, then don't fucking use the heads, Gray. Use one of the fucking thousand other Mark III heads you have. I actually on. ran out of Mark III heads. Well, it was fucking. A sad day. Seethe, I, I actually guess. think the After... heads are great without the spikes. Like, he, like yeah, if you cut the you spike, spike off, off, the head is is super cool. It's, really there's, like not, there's, it's there's not even a there's not even a uh, a stud that you're like or a um, uh, rivet. There's not even a rivet that you're fucking up by doing. I'm not even that mad about the spike. Yeah, no, I, I like them. I I think they're a good addition, and I really like the uh, the fact that they come with the uh, the van braces that Dude, uh, make that them compatible such... with the uh, upgrade so, like, kits. Like that's that's what tells me that like there are still intelligent people working at Game Somebody Game there cares. Shit, like, somebody there cares. Somebody there is actually fucking rubbing two neurons together to make fire. Because like that Alan shit, Bly fucking that shit is fucking ingenious. And then yeah. you have somebody writing the rules for the fucking. Legion Hereticus. The fucking golden cash egg that, like, yeah. the unit doesn't even fucking work. For the, the heavy like, bikes that get turned off by the sword. Heavy bikes. Oh, Jesus I fuck. guarantee you, as far as, by the way, one last point of Legion Hereticus. Oh, boy. I guarantee you that will improve in later Legions. And yet again, Emperor's children are going to suffer from a, you came out first. I you mean, know, I have a hard time. Well, stay in the I goddamn know. closet then, Gray. I have a hard time feeling bad for Emperor's children, man. They they can they can be pretty fucking rough. When, yeah, when they are not know. bad. They're not bad. They're not bad at uh, all. Sun killers but, can be oppressive, but remember, they're one wound. Dude, I'm not even talking about. I'm not even talking about the fucking sun killers. I'm talking about the fact that you can make a fucking despoiler squad. Oh, your elite fucking assault unit hits me on sixes. Teehee. Like, <laughs> okay. I'll get, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Like, <laughs> yeah, he said the line. All he, right. He said the thing. He said the thing. <laughs> can we get that on a t-shirt? I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, myself. we absolutely can. <laughs> At some point, we're gonna have to get you know matching tattoos. That's that's up there. Just a, a catchphrase from each of us. What would our catchphrases be? I think I I do think that your you know yours could be. Well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> I think you're that's a good probably one. never punish, Ben. Never punish. That's Eric's. That's yeah, that's, oh, yeah. I, that's... I say that, that all the goddamn time. Yeah, Grays Eric says that... Uh, say what? Grays would probably be based. Just based, <laughs> based. for the period. <laughs> so I don't have one. All right. <laughs> um, well, I thought I, I was... I thought it would be more things, quotable. Ben. I do say well, a lot. The uh, I'm objectively never wrong comes out a lot. <laughs> well, 
I mean, it, objectively, I, I'm never wrong. I dare you to prove me wrong. <laughs> I'm usually right. It surprises people. <laughs> Maybe uh maybe uh I I busted my ass at Jake's beach house. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. It do in fact be like that sometimes. That's my phrase. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh oh, fuck. I had I had another one and I just fucking lost it. Oh yeah, so Mark Mark three, anyone got a got another pick? We got um, Fulgrim, yeah. we got Mark III. I do like that they uh, are releasing or letting you buy the Rogue Trader book again. I think that's a good choice for them. I, I, it's not out yet, but I think that uh, Imperialis uh, could be awesome. Could be. So I'm look, I, I think it could be, and I think that if it... If that is yet another way to get people in that might also lead to more, you know, Titanicus players, more Aeronautica players, just more, you know, of the specialist games in general, as long as it's well done, I think that'll be awesome. I think it I think it has a chance to. I think from what I've seen though, it's it's a lot of stuff that's multi part that probably should be single part. And that may make it hard to, for people to get into unless they really are diehard want to play in that scale i, I don't One know of like I, people out of at is not wanting to fuck with at models fiddly bits on at models you know what i mean well, well there's what just, fiddly bits are just on complex models. models you know i love I mean, them but they are just complex models it's, it's a rite of passage for so, new you know, at players to fuck up the assembly on their reaver legs oh yeah right. that's and true so what i'm saying is like if you have another there's... another specialist game come out that's very fucking fiddly to put together. You're gonna get your influx of people who are gonna be buying it to buy it, and they'll get that to start, and then they'll build like two things, and it'll end up on the used shelf at the store. Nothing can be worse. Of yeah. people who want to play it. I don't know. I th I think that it will be a, I think that it will be a a benefit to the to the gaming community, like having it. Like people have been asking for Epic, again, and so I think yeah. having that small scale option. To play big battle on, you know, you know, big army on army, I yeah. think that's going to be a, a good Dude, thing. But I mean, time will tell. But for the for the time being, I will say that you know, I want I, it to I do think, well. I want it to do well as well. So, um, I just think like they're they. It does seem like we've been getting more information about things like heresy related and otherwise, just more reliably, which I think yeah. has just been a good thing this year. Yeah, they haven't had a leak in a while, have they? No. Um, I don't know. They had the uh there were leaks about the um the the Fulgrim book. Like the but but it wasn't like a long time you know, ahead of it. It was like, like a you week. know, a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, I mean, what what was the leak that hey, you guys already have these? The leak was the exemplary no, battles like, that they've been the putting out over the about... past. <laughs> Like another... the specifics about Fulgrim and yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. the Legionis Hereticus. I'm just taking the piss another again. Super, I don't know if it's a pick or not, or anything. I don't know if that's. I think we can all agree that it's fantastic that they redid the Space Wolf heads and that the Space Wolf oh, yeah. creature that came out is. They they got fucking Sonic into redoing the fucking. They did. Space they got cyber bullied <laughs> into making better. Which I didn't have a problem with the wolf heads personally, but. Uh, they were. Dog well, shit. there's plenty of them available. I guarantee it. But um, <laughs> already had a good. bunch. <laughs> and the new, the newer Space Wolf Praetor that's coming out came out. I don't. I think it hasn't. Yeah, really he's out. Yet. Yeah, he is fantastic. Yeah, I'm compared to I like him. That already existed. I hate to say I it, but it is a good-looking Space Wolf. He's a, he's a, it's a fucking good model. I actually didn't have a problem with the old uh, Praetor either, but I just. I uh, just I'm fine with options. Like they don't all have to be fucking phenomenal. I think me. a lot of the Space Wolf models for Heresy have like they're good overall, but they have like one or two really glaring flaws in them. Uh, I mean, yeah, like the upside down bolters, but I mean, like that that was bolters, weird. Banana fur. The actually, um, so those don't look nearly as bad when you paint them better. And then um, Havaro was a terrible fucking model. Oh, I love Fat Bastard. So much so, I've totally not built him yet. 
I just yeah. have my the, my scratch built one from uh, yeah, first dead. Yeah, your scratch built one is better than Havarl, legit. So that's just my that might be my two cents. Yeah, Big school's definitely got to glow up this year. Good, yeah, we need it. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't disagree that we needed it. Like they needed a range said, glow you can, up. You can put pearls on a pig, and it's still a pig, but it's a good looking pig. <laughs> That'll fucking do, pig. Quote from Kermit the Frog. Oh, why do my fingers always smell like bacon? <laughs> Have you seen uh, this well, Kermit on the fucking uh, Omegle with the zucchini? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't say that, but, yeah. He's, he is a menace and needs to be stopped. <laughs> he is a state and needs to be supported. <laughs> He's doing um, the Lord's work. Yeah, Eric, you got any wins? Yeah, uh, as as Jake so subtly pointed out earlier, uh, my subtlety is my middle name. Pick of the year and his first and last, in case you didn't get the point. Uh, <laughs> but my pick of the year is uh, the Demons of the Ruin Storm PDF. I've uh, not always been like a huge demon player, but I will say that Corn Demon Kin is the most fun I've ever had with 40k back in seventh edition. Um, but I am very pleased with number one, the fact that it is free, uh, which just yeah. makes the whole Fulgrim thing a little more baffling. Um, I think yeah. it's a pretty well put together. It's definitely toned down much like custodies. It's toned down from the just ungodly potential power level they had last edition. Um, and I, th I think, uh, that, much like, you know, you hear, like, every podcaster and their dog has a militia list that they're doing. I think that's going to be uh, us with demons. I think everybody's yeah. planning a demon list. Everybody wants to, you know, do something to see how it is. I've got plans for one. Um, yeah, that's gonna I think come we've all got my... a demon list. Yeah, we, and we were all sharing them. I think <clears throat> it came out pretty well. It's not too overtuned. Um it definitely does have some like shortcomings. I wish they had a few more ranged options. Yeah. Like I wish that, you know, I could use like my skull cannons for something I think they need that more was units, like but... Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe I they're a vast improvement over last edition, which like their power level notwithstanding, which I think was pretty easily abusable. But I mean, let's just talk about their fucking deployment method. Oh it's, yeah. Like, straight up broken. Like yeah, and the fact that they used yeah. to be able to just the play their own way, game. Like, you could either just completely shut down your opponent's army with placing the portals in the correct place, yeah. or you or could you in turn have yourself... Get, right, exactly. You could just get completely like, okay, Locked. Glad, glad I came out to play tonight. Thank you. Well, at least well, I didn't have to unpack. Well, I, I guess think... I'll just go fuck myself now. It <laughs> is. I think it is good that yeah. You know, I, I agree with Eric. Like that was a good release. I will say, like while it's got problems, I like the militia army list. Um, mm. and I just but higher level than that, we have gotten multiple armies now that have been released, you know, for free. Like that, they were not tied to a book release. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, that uh, that's that's a good sign. Yeah, I think we're taking a step in the right direction as far yeah. as we're getting. Like, yeah, it's not perfect. Stuff faster, it's not perfect. We're not getting all the stuff we want in no. the order we want it, but we are getting stuff which is better than what was happening towards the end of first. Yeah, you were going like a year and a half, two years. Oh, yeah, we were like, saying okay, a heresy is dead. Here's one character series. Go fuck yourself. You know. Yeah, I mean, I think you know both demons and militia are more than usable. They have some neat options. It it makes a lot of you know alternate models very viable in heresy. You know, aesthetically and mechanically. Yeah. I just I don't think it's I don't think that that's a bad thing. Yeah, I also like it as far as, like, options and, you know, we talk about narrative aspects. They've still got that same, like, etheric dominion thing, but now there's so many more. Where before you had, yeah. like, one of each of the four oh. and then an undivided yeah. and a malal. Mm -hmm. Now you've got, like, yeah. dark mech-focused kind of deal, like obliterator virus kind of stuff. And whatever the hell Samus is supposed to be encroaching ruin is a, its own, yeah. own thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Which, like, so not to completely, like, 
steal your your pick, but like, so a criticism I've heard of this is that, well, like I alluded to earlier, I've heard people say like, oh, it's just bad. Like, oh, oh, okay. What demons? Yeah, I don't know if they're reading the same rules packet I am or not. Yeah, right. Like, I'll see. I'll see how you could say this army is bad or like unplayable, but that notwithstanding, um, I have heard it criticized for having fewer choices in yeah. like how you equip your demons, which right. I will push back against that by saying, okay, look what they did with the militia stuff where okay yeah sure i think there are more choices now for building your militia than there were last edition because last edition you'd see the same two provenances two or three provenances and then nothing else whereas now they have what like two dozen different provenances you can choose from and each one has something unique and special going for it where they kind of went the opposite direction with the demons where they kind of condensed down what your actual choices ended up being. And now it's like, okay, well, you can have any of these things, but you got to pay points cost. Well, the the Etheric Dominions, like they increased the amount of them that there were to choose from, and those have to be taken army wide. Right. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I guess I guess I was not being clear. I'm specifically <clears throat> talking about like unit choices. So like yeah, I mean like the warrior. fact that you have you have lesser demons and swarms; those are your troops, and you either have you know the the demon blades or you have the projectiles, and right. there's no mix I mean, and like, match. But let's yeah. talk about like you know people who actually ran demon stuff last edition. I mean, how many of those? Uh, emanations of horror would you actually see like would you right. actually see molten blood or like the fucking uh, vomit whatever that was like would you actually see those or would you just see the three up save one or sure. rending claws one or the like, rift barb right or, yeah like the rift barb on like the shrikes like okay sure. like those are the same three things you would see army wide so now they're just like okay well we're just going to give you the choices you want which like we saw them doing that with um the like centurion models just come with refractor field like artifice yeah. armor and refractor fields because literally everybody bought that for every astartes character they ever purchased yeah and praetors <laughs> now come stock with an iron halo even though they didn't right. before and you could have given your praetor a refractor field i think but like whoever did that nobody. i think they came with a refractor field and you could upgrade it to an iron halo. uh yeah. maybe. maybe i don't even know that that's, that's true was, yeah but the centurions right. came with power armor and you could give them a refractor right field. And it's you like, had to okay. buy Artificer. Yeah. Back it's in right. my so day. So like, I, I like that there are fewer choices because that's just like, okay, I have my little shitty lesser demons to squat on an objective, I guess. Do yeah. I want them to have the talons for like a fucking counter charge? Or do I want them to have the shitty little projectiles well, to be able to, you know, intercept yeah. maybe or something? Just having options for the sake of there being options is not always a good thing. Like they have to be options that are reasonably usable. Sure. Like, like bad they have to. Bad options. Yeah, they have to fit in with someone's play style. But like, I'm sure we'll pop into it later. But sometimes some options are just so far and away the best ones that it's almost like not having an option at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you see and, that with fucking current year 40k. Oh, that's the oh yeah. Well, you see it with current heresy, like yeah. that. That um, because and you know, we were talking about this kind of before we started recording that, um, you know, it's, it's hard for a lot of players to not like to take suboptimal builds of things, and like, but but sometimes the choices really pushed upon you like not, not only are you taking something that's suboptimal but something as simple as just a weapons choice can make a unit either busted or nearly unplayable <laughs> like why would i take anything but las cannons on my heavy support squad sure like, yeah like like it, the it, same it, as half the other choices anyway and it's the best option so why would i 
Yeah, yeah like, or why? Sun, you know, sun killers can take plasma cannons. Why would I ever do that? Yeah, sun killers is actually probably the best uh, example. E example because, yeah, there is no difference in the price of weapons. They, they get worse for the points if you don't take the last cannons. Like, sure, you could so you could make an argument like, oh, Volkites or heavy bolters are better for uh, you know at ra a certain they ranges or for or ho oh they can't. <laughs> No, they can only take um, las cannons, multi meltas, and plasma cannons. Yeah, plasma their, cannons. their their whole shtick is like energy Ugh. weapons only. Yeah, the only time that the only thing that can you put them in a uh, drop pod? Nope. Okay, then yeah, they there's get, literally no reason. Fine, though. It's yeah, true. I mean, you, you know what? Fuck it. Put give them all, give them all multi meltas, and stick them in a Spartan. It, maybe, Fuck it. but I will destroy that Spartan immediately. I need you to know that. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, but you're again, it's obviously a worse choice. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's that that's problematic sometimes. But like, <clears throat> to get back to demon stuff, like I think there's actually interesting choices to make. Yeah, there are. Your list construction, like, um, I I might have missed this. I think I. I've heard this a couple times. Do you have to take the same etheric dominion across yes. the entire army? You do, you have except to take it across for the... Lords of War. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I was just about to say, uh, the Lords of War tend to have like they're a force multipliers. Like they tend to do things that help units around them. Like I know that uh, uh, Corbax Utter Blight. Any of the units around him that have the 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 Nurgle uh, um, damage mitigation etheric dominion like they get to re-roll it when they're within I want uh, ten inches or so of them I don't remember yeah but like makes that's like super you know thematic yeah it's gonna be an absolute you know, ass to fight oh, against fucker, but yeah. but but that makes sense for yeah. for who they are and he's also not cheap and he's a Lord of War so yeah. so I mean. You know, <clears throat> you've probably heard it said. You know, don't don't spam hierarchs or sovereigns. Yeah. Sovereigns. Don't don't spam sovereigns and you'll be good. Like I've also seen. Uh, I think it's the hierarchs that do the like pocket. That's pocket. A, yeah. the harbinger. Yeah. Harbingers. So like I've seen the harbinger. Maybe the yeah. I've line seen, thing. Right. I've seen yeah. the like. Chain. Or you could just take the sovereign with the wings and the um, warlord trait. We can just flick himself across the field. But yeah. who cares? Yeah, but the, I mean, that's, and that's the thing, too, right? So, like, okay, I think we can all safely agree that the Slanesh Warlord trait is the best one. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't recall which one it is. It's the one where you can run in charge. Oh, yeah. With the Sovereign that can also fly, can also ignore intervening terrain. Yeah, he, he's a 14-inch move who's I-6 when you so he yeah. runs. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but that kind of I don't think it specifically does, but I think it kind of like from a narrative perspective or like a like a theming perspective kind of locks you into a Slanesh build. Like, yeah, yeah, it does. So like, okay, sure, Slanesh might be the best best quote unquote choice, but like yeah, I don't want to play Slanesh. I disagree. Wanna... Like, like it, it, it obviously by the the name is Eternal Reveler, right? Yeah. But there's nothing about running and charging that's inherently Slanesh. In fact, the amongst the legions, the guys who can run and charge are what Space Wolves and can't uh, World Eaters do it in some cases? No, World Eaters no, cannot. Can't, no. So it's just, it's just Space, Space Wolves. Wolves. Yeah, but I mean, Slanesh yeah, has always been the go fast thing. They they've had like yeah. fleet on demonets in the past. Yeah, and... right. That that, like, that is an established kind of like theme. But you could just be fast for being fast. There's nothing about it that's. Yeah, I mean, you you could be fast for like your bloodthirster because he's just that fucking blood hungry and all that. Like I I get what you're saying, and they're named yeah. kind of. Like the where you can get you get what it is what it's supposed to be in the name, but also it's like that could be anything. Anything, right. yeah. But it's I think like, what, uh, mm -hmm. kind of bringing it back around, we are talking about Militia too. I think a lot of the choices that they intend for you to be able to make, because when you look at the armies that we have that are free in PDFs, 
are the ones that there are no official Horus Heresy specific models for, except for like the greater demon Lords Lords of War. So it's like, yeah, the, your your options here are not necessarily going to be <laughs> make a really interestingly varied mechanically force. It even says in the militia PDF at the beginning, it's like this is a modeler's army. Like, the, the diversity and interesting choices that you're going to make are going to be in what you choose to represent your lesser yeah. demons. And, like, like as an example, um, half of my uh, Cornate demons are going to be fucking AOS orc pigs. Because I fucking love yeah. those pigs. So, you know, it's it, there's going to be, like, regular corn demon stuff in there, too. But, like... You can do whatever you want with that stuff. There's there's no rules. Dork, mork, and pork. Hell yeah. <laughs> but like, I, I just really right. like. I, I think it's. I think saying that you don't have, like, criticizing the demons list for saying you don't have enough choices. I think is is not fair. It's ingenuous. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there's a lot less unit types, like physical unit choices, than there were before. I mean, which I'm also okay with because yeah. then are there, have... but are there fewer choices? Well, so yeah. like you don't have possessed lost... Marines anymore, or possessed we auxilia. Strikes. Well, strikes I and mean... like Harriers. I mean, they're different. Yeah. But I don't think Harriers yeah, were a thing before. Thing. It, which uh... well, I mean, yeah, but, like but you still make... get the unit. Like you still right. do. You still get the same result. I think there were some more units. I would have to go back and look at the black book, but I think yeah. there was more than about ten units. Yeah, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look yeah, as as we all that... go to open. Oh, book eight is the only one I don't have on PDF. Luckily, it's on my shelf. Which one? Which one is that one? I can't remember the name. Uh, malevolence. 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 I think there were more unit types than malevolence. But that's all right. Deck. But I mean, I like, okay, like so. You know, you lost some options, you gained some other options. Like, now you have Harriers, which are just winged lesser demons. No, I really, and even, even, even so, like, I don't think it's, it's short on anything necessarily, except maybe ranged options, I think are kind of poo-poo. So there were, there were two, there were two, uh, oh, no, hold on. Where are you going? All right, so you had the Ruin Storm. De I'm not ca counting any of the named units. Yeah. Uh, the named characters. All right, so you had the Ruin Storm Demon Lord, uh, and then the uh, Greater Demon and the Chosen were the uh, HQs. So still the same amount of HQs. Um, there was heralds in that. Maybe that's no, the that's the you're, uh, that's what the Chosen are supposed to be. Just like the Harbingers yeah. are supposed to be heralds. Yep. So you've got, and then the elites. You have the Ruin Storm Demon Brutes, the less, uh, and that's and all that's you it. had for elites was the brutes. Oh, okay. uh, troops. You had the lesser demons, the beasts, the swarms, and the possessed. That's the that's that's that is a unit that was well and truly lost. Yeah, um, and then the beasts you, just got moved from troops to elites now. Yeah. Um, then you had the demon cavalry. Um, the Shrikes, um, which those were, I mean, basically those are now a part of the demon or the brutes, basically. Um, then you have heavy supports. You've got the, the demon, uh, the greater demon beast and the behemoths. Oh, and then a Lords of War, you had the arch demon. Which so, all that stuff is the same. Yeah, the same amount. So literally the say, only so thing sounds is... like a, it's a wash. No. About the same, yeah. Yeah, the only thing that's actually gone, gone is the possessed, and I guess the shrikes because harriers are more just like lesser demons with wings. But the overall yeah. number is like, just you can possessed. Fill the same role as the shrike with some of the other choices. Oh, that, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like at the end of the day, yeah, there's a, there's that unit type is gone, but you can still get the same model on the field. True. And I also understand why they cut the possessed because you can't ally these unbound ruin storm demons with anybody, so it wouldn't really make sense to have a bunch of possessed assholes running around. Yeah, like yeah. where do those guys come from if the yeah. demons are just opening up from the veil? Yeah. So like from, from like a, you can still use that modeling and thematic demons. standpoint. I understand. Like I think possessed are super cool concept as well but like 
from a rules perspective and like a theming on the sure. table perspective. I think. So, so I mean, overall, I think that I I, I like what the, they did with the demons. I, I've I've fought against a few of them. Not a pure demon list, but I have fought you know some demons, and they're tough. Uh, but they've got some answers. Uh, sure. that that can really fuck them over. Yeah, so, I sovereigns mean, just... are definitely a lot tougher than I first took them for. Probably oh yeah, uh, sovereigns are terrifying. Um, that's, like, start, uh, yeah, start that's why them, having like, multiple of them shit. is going to be rough. I think so, multiple so psychic ones is is broke. Th there's your there's your. It depends on the psychic power. Okay, don't we don't have shooting? I'll just make all my HQs telepathy psychers and just shut down your <laughs> shooting. So like yeah. it's a wash now. Well, oh, like, but I think, I think, oh yeah, and but then you've got you know players like me who like I usually have a psychic hood on the field like yeah. that's gonna cause you some consternation. Sure. Right. Well, and like okay, so like I think we've talked about this before in chat, but like I think telepathy for demons is fair. I think it's fair. Yeah, I mean they. they uh, need I don't. It. Otherwise, it, I'm just gonna like get it depends. By it's this a, shooting it's legion tough, list. It's fair, man. I still, I still think it's, I think it, I, I, I think still right think it depends. Being broken. I think spamming it is still like, okay, maybe let's not make all three of our HQs telepathy psychers. But like, I think having them is more of like a, this is my demon sovereign with eternal reveler and telepathy psyker. Or like, okay, that's, that's your big fuck off unit. Like I got it. Yeah. yeah I mean, they, they've, sense. yeah. So I mean, I, I, but again, I think overall it's a it's a positive addition. So yeah. Um, any other wins for the year? Probably several. I, oh, I mean, sure yeah. there are, there are other ones, but okay. Yeah, nothing that comes yep. to mind right now. I guess um, I'll I'll like piggyback off my own pick for the the Mark Three. Like I think that battle box is a super big win. Like the yeah, I, I think it was good. In the Derideo. But big, big piss of the year for it being limited print. Yeah, yeah. that's fucking ass. I wonder if that's something that they'll like retcon or like change their mind on that. Like, uh, maybe. I I, I, I like could see it, this but could be like a cursed city situation. But the value of that box is so good that. It would be hard to have that model or that box exist with the individual units also existing. Yeah, no, because, it, like, it why would I happen. ever buy a Land Raider by itself? Why, why yeah. would I buy a Land Raider Proteus for, what, 120 bucks? I think why would you ever buy a Derrida in a box by itself? Yeah, like, when I could just spend another 100 bucks and get a fuckload of other stuff. Yeah. I think well, it'll I mean, be so like um, I, 2019, the um, Mark III set that they had as a bundle in 2019. Sure. Yeah. So, but, you know, I thought that was cool. Well, just the fact that they're making a Horus Heresy Battle Force box of, like, the yeah. new releases. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I would. It would be great if it was for a non-Legion army. Yeah. Well, let's see a plastic non-legion heresy army and then we can we can talk more about that like this secret secret for... plastic army that's supposed to be coming out anytime now which which like, is yeah. almost 100 percent to going to be solar rocks yeah i agree yeah i think so too. i will be shooketh if it is not yeah. solar rocks yeah and, I, and I, don't 100%. don't miss me with the well, fucking most demon they're plastic fuck off like i'm not talking about that. <laughs> yes, most demon models that exist now are plastic. Like fuck off. But they exist in every other game system. Hell, I think you can play them in Necromunda now. Fuck it. I, I, <laughs> actually, I, I I I made that up, but it also yeah. wouldn't surprise me if there was a way to bring in demons in Necromunda. Or like oh, if, sure if there was a if there was a chaos cultist gang that like you yeah. could summon like a blood letter. Like that'd be pretty sick. Well, there are Chaos Cultist gangs, and there's, uh, what is it, the individual hero guys you can add in that are rogue right. psychers. The, like, uh, hired guns. Yeah, there's yeah. hired gun, gun rogue psychers. Yeah. I need. I do need to learn how to play uh, Necromunda. It's pretty, just... it's pretty solid. It's just something that, like, 
nobody that I want to play with cares about it. So like, oh, I mean, you should have left us, and then you well, could have played. You know, it'd be like that. But yeah, so I mean, I guess I guess we kind of that you know have been kind of interspersing, if that's a word. I don't know, not hundred percent on that one. It's late, but we've been kind of mixing in this talk. I think during our oh, yeah. picks, but like you know, just event recap and general thoughts about heresy for the past year like where we think the game's at like where we I think where we see i'm gonna going. say i think i would summarize by saying that overall everything we're seeing is good coming out and heresy is probably in the best spot it's been since it came out in 2012 yeah really i would say it's mm -hmm. never been so accessible it's never been so mainline and basically 2012 was the last time you had this heavy of a release schedule for heresy yeah, yeah. um i would agree i from the the popularity standpoint like you know on a on a, a local scale i mean it ebbs and flows it's at the end of the day it's not 40k and 40k is the um that's the 800 pound gorilla in the room like the it gets the most support it is it is the most accessible of the game systems um that's that is their flagship so it's never going to be as popular as as that but um so I, i'm not sure if i shared these numbers with you um and i'm i'm kind of pulling some of it out of my ass but um i i when I was doing, or when we were doing our last uh, preps for the Nova Open uh, this year, and for anyone who doesn't know what the Nova Open is, it's a it's one of the largest tabletop gaming conventions in the U.S. Uh, it's one of the well, we we kind of call the big three: the Las Vegas Open, Adepticon, and Nova Open. Um, and um, last year was the first year that I ran all of the heresy events at Nova. And it was a big success. We had a great time. It was the first major US event uh, with um, Second Ed. Which, and so the, we expected there to be a, just a big rush on the event because it was all new. So we, we really were expecting it to be successful and lo and behold, it was. Um, and so second year you know the prep work going into the nova open you know of course we wanted to build on that success we wanted to do so much more and grow and so i mean we got for lack of a better way of putting it we got cocky and we really expanded our offerings like we more than doubled the amount of events and the spaces for attendees uh instead of heresy being a th basically three days of events, we, we spread that shit to five and we went from, I think eight events to 17. Yeah. And it was like, it wasn't just five days of events. It was all day, like 9 AM to like 2 AM. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, the, and, 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 and I, Hold on, yeah. And I will clarify just for, you know, for the, uh, the two of you that weren't there and for anyone mm -hmm. listening, like it wasn't all mainline Age of Darkness. There were some, uh, you know, we did have a couple of Titanicus events. We had a um, oh, we had a Battle Fleet event in there. Next year, we will very likely have a Legionis Imperialis uh, event. And but also Centurion and Zone Mortalis. Oh yeah, yeah, we had Zone Mortalis, which I would I would consider that mainline because you know it is using Age of Darkness rules. There are you know Zone Mortalis rules out, but I mean, but so it ran and we did do it like an Apocalypse event. So, but it was all heresy, um, and so we're it's Strike Team too, didn't you? Yeah, we did have Strike Team as well. And um, Primark Rumble, which is. I, I, if you're lumping that in with me, yeah, I mean, you're right. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right. Well, we yeah, so we had some like that. fun, yeah, we had some just fun like offbeat yeah. events. Oh, we still had these are still 
piracy games that you know people like you know usually you have to buy into the event like you pay to get go to the convention but then you pay for your event entry as well right um and that's and i understand the first time i did that i thought that's fucking weird but now that i'm running it like i i get it like it they have to have an op. They have to have an operating budget. You have to rely on people to show up to run your uh, to to go to the event. So paying for it, like put skin in the game. They're actually going to show up. That I get that now. Um, but anyways, uh, back to my point. So we're doing our prep work. I'm worth my. I'm, we're, we're having meetings with my uh, event organizers, and like beforehand, I had I was actually able to go through the. Uh, the registration site and export all of the event data for Nova. All of it. That includes like how much the events cost and uh, the available spots and how many of those spots had been filled. And so I won't give like specific numbers. So these are, but just to give you an idea. Um, so you, the number one event is what you would expect it to be, Warhammer 40k. Um, like, eh, and then number two is kind of what you would expect as well, Age of Sigmar. Both of those are, you know, major flagship games. They have, um, you know, the Nova Open holds the, like, their uh, world championships or the qualifiers to the world mm -hmm. championships. I don't remember one of the two, but it's a big deal. So those you would expect to be in the number one and number two slot. Sure. Well, last year, Heresy was not number three. I, I cannot tell you exactly where they were, but they were further down the line. But this year, expanding our events, expanding the amount of uh, available slots, um, like not only were we very nearly sold out of damn near every event, um, we had a and we had a waiting list on a couple of events that were 15 to 25 people long. Like we went, we were solidly number three in terms of revenue, nice. and number four was far away from us. So I mean, it, we're so in the big dogs, man. We're in the big we dogs. we we jumped up by a large percentage. And you know we got, and we maintained a, a high level of quality. Like we got, I've 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 gone over uh, you know some of the feedback. Like yeah, there's always places that you can improve. It's not going to be perfect, but like it's mostly positive. People had a good time. Like we, you know, other game systems came by and like commented on just the energy that the Heresy group had was like you did not see that in other games like but so i mean not that they were bad but just we had something different and special and like that's that's a huge compliment for you know for me and my team because that's what we want we want it to be good we want it to be fun we you know we want people to go in there and have you know, it'd be, it'd be able to rely on the fact that, like, this is going to be well run and I'm going to be playing games with really cool people that are like that are doing a good job on their armies. And there were some beautiful armies and there was a huge spread of army types. Like there were militia players there. Like there were solar ox players. It wasn't all uh, Imperial Fist. Legion army. Yeah, it wasn't all Imperial Fists. There were some. Of course there were. But... Like every army was basically represented, and that was awesome. So all of that to say that, yeah, you know, the the concerns that I had really, like, okay, was was last year kind of a, you know, and also it was the first Nova Open uh, since the uh, pandemic last year. Yeah. So okay, is this a flash in the pan sort of? Uh, scenario where people like it, we only did well because people were desperate to go back to a, a, a convention uh, and oh and and we've got a new edition like is that gonna is that popularity going to you know maintain is it gonna grow like we had no idea like a and new, so new toy fact, syndrome yeah exactly uh, so the fact that we had a, another year where we expanded so much 
and we still filled it out. We, you know, we jumped so much in our, you know, our value to the event itself, you know, the convention itself, um, and still got a ton of compliments from people saying like, this was the best event that they had ever been to. Yes, definitely going to come back and make the trip. I, we had people from Australia who came to the event who said like, yeah, damn straight, I'm coming back and I'm bringing friends with me. This is the best Warhammer we have ever played. Like that's huge. So I think that Heresy is in a phenomenal place right now. And I am going to go to, um, I'm going to go to Adepticon in uh, March, and I I fully expect that they're going to have uh, a good turnout there as well. Oh yeah. So yeah. It's uh, it's been a good year to be a Heresy player, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, we're eating well. Yeah, I mean, I hey, if and for you guys here and for anyone else who's listening, like I definitely recommend the Nova Open if you're into Heresy, like or, or the the ancillary Heresy products because they're going to be represented and you're going to get some really good players to play against. Um, uh, the the East Coast has got a really good Heresy community, and I've worked with you know a lot of bigger groups from the east coast they 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 send people there you know every year and we all have a good time um we still have we we still have things that we need to improve and work on but i think that that's a i think that that's just going to be a, a a common thing every year and we will do that and i think that heresy has the potential to continue growing um with and the fact that we're still getting reasonable product launches to me, just states like that. This has got it. This has got some longevity. Yep. It's it's got some room to grow. It's got it's definitely got some staying power. I mean, hell, I, I mean, but the first Nova I went to was in '19, and they're you know, they the uh, the releases were far fewer and far between yeah. than they are now. So yeah, I think it's a good. I think we're in a good spot now. It definitely seems like Games Workshop believes in heresy as well as hard as they're pushing it, which is a good thing. Yeah, they definitely do. Well, which is good. I've well, I've got some weird opinions about Games Workshop in general. I mean, um, no, we all. Well, yeah, we do, but we're like heresy and the events specifically. I I. On one hand, I wish that Games Workshop was more willing to assist and support heresy of like the actual events and maybe they do for adepticon and uh las vegas open um i assume that las vegas open has heresy events i'm, I'm actually not certain i know adepticon does um but they were a kind of hands off um and even well I, what really surprised me is that they they offered some some support but then they when I told them what I needed they're like oh we actually don't have anything for zone mortalis or a titanicus they simply don't run the events so they don't have materials to support it yeah i mean that's fine i and think that's like, not necessarily a bad thing at the end of the day gw are the feds in this situation so you don't want them yes. meddling well, that, that is that was my, the other hand of my statement that 100 percent the while I, I would like to have some support at the end of the day. Yeah. Having full control and them not having a way to weasel in and start dictating things, I think, is one of the reasons why we are able to be as successful as we are. So sure. it wiggle the room is wiggle room, my friend, the. I would like to have the support because, you know, I, I end up, you know, not only myself, but my, my other EOs, we, we invest a lot of this is, you know, our materials, our, our, our time, our money that we are putting into this to make it happen. Um, so Jake, I know you were there, uh, and, uh, Eric, you've been before, but all of that terrain is ours. <laughs> like, like of the 42 tables, I think, uh, that we provided this year, uh, you know, six, you know, between 16 and 20 of that was mine. 
I don't remember exactly, and we, you know, you mix it up during the day, but, you know, roughly that much of that was just my personal stash, and the rest of it came, you know, from a lot of the guys in uh, Richmond and, you know, a couple of other, you know, people who were volunteering it, and that's fine, like, that's awesome that everyone's willing to do that. I certainly don't mind doing it, and, but it would be nice if the company was a little bit more willing to, like, Hey, we you're you're doing us a solid. Like you're giving us a, a, an immeasurable amount of marketing. Yeah. Let's help you out. Now, no, I will say Nova, the the company themselves, they they did their best to help us out with whatever we asked for. So don't let anything I'm saying like paint them negatively. They they have been amazing to work with, and right. you know. If, to the point where I've had to be like guys like no nah, we got this like you, we don't we don't want to deal work with your stuff we just we want to control it all we don't want to have the responsibility of taking care of your shit too <laughs> right so uh, but yeah that was a great event uh, and then going straight into call to arms here locally you know had a, a another sold out heresy narrative there too including, um, which, including you know, for the first time uh, Deptus Titanicus yeah um you know one of our other locals uh jack uh he was interested in you know you know running an event for the first time himself uh and i was since i had the it, there was no reason not to let him run it at my convention like <laughs> it was it was a no-brainer to me the only reason i didn't originally choose to do it was just i don't I don't have the expertise in it that where I felt confident running an event. Right. But he did, and or he had the the game knowledge, most of it at least. Uh, <laughs> and we had the space, so we got. Uh, well, I think we had, um, including Jack, eight players, which is not huge, but you know it's you know first year Titanic first year and Titanicus isn't massive around here. Yeah. Um, but everyone who played had a good time. Um, and it, it established a precedent that, you know, we can, you know, we can run events on Friday night there, you know, that you know, people will be a part of, um, everyone, you know, it worked out well. And Jack got a little bit of experience, you know, running an event. What I will say, you know, as an event organizer for heresy, like it's, you, it, y'all make it easy most of the time like everyone's pretty easy going like people just want to have a good time they're mostly uh uh self-regulating like you know it's nice where if if you have a question or something's not working like raising your hand and be like oto we've got a problem we want you to fix this no they're usually everyone's first a, a thing is like they will check the book and they will talk it out first and that's 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 not always the norm at events because i used to run a lot of 40k events as well so just the fact that players will take the time and be like hey let's let's look this over let's figure it out ourselves and if we can't then that's when we get the uh the to involved and be like hey we need you Right. And sometimes it's super duper simple, like just a, you know, something that, you know, maybe they just hadn't run into before. But then sometimes you get these really weird niche uh, uh, combinations of effects or whatever or interactions that may never happen again. And so you just have to kind of make your best guess and move forward. And I will say that, like, tangential related but i mean not for nothing that food truck that we had come up for lunch uh the lady did say despite like the rather long wait times and the fact that i think they were late as well like she said um, that we were the most uh, agreeable crowd that they'd ever brought that food truck to oh yeah i mean gamers like there are some gamers that definitely take it too far and we make jokes about it but more often than not, most of the gamers that we interact with are, I mean, they're pretty even killed people. They, they just, they want to go and they want to have a good time and they're easy to work with. Um, 
I mean, I've definitely had my interactions with some of the more grognard type, and they, there were definitely some at that, at that convention. But we we regularly get compliments from people. Um, hell, even the, the 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 heresy event, like they there were some people that were like, they don't we don't want the tournament in here. They always call us tournaments. Uh, we don't want the tournament near us because they're going to be loud and awful, and like we're no louder than any other games that are going on. <laughs> so. And the, and the only loudness we have is like, oh fuck yeah, or like oh god. Like, yeah. Well, then <laughs> everyone we're screaming up. about everyone's nice cock. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the uh, um, I will admit maybe the end got a little out of hand, but still, and that like, was also really fucking funny. <laughs> I mean, this um, no, I, but the most out of hand it got the was at. Nice. The, so I mean, the they were the cocks yeah were nice. yeah the oh, cocks were so nice. The, the most out of hand it got was at the Mexican restaurant where <laughs> we damn near had an international incident. <laughs> Mister Armager. <laughs> Mr. Armager. Uh, like, to your R. point about, like, figuring out rules stuff, like, this could just be me, but, like, anytime, I, you know, I like to think I know the game pretty well. So anytime I tell my opponent, like, oh, yeah, like, I can do this here because of this rule, or, like, uh, no, you can't actually do that. Like, it doesn't work that way. Or, like, actually, what you can do here is this. And they'll be like, really? And as soon as I get a really, I'll be like, well, let me just double check just to make sure I'll look it up in the book for us. <laughs> I'll, I'll go fuck myself. In this book. <laughs> but like, you know, um, I don't remember. It was something like Heart of the Legion. Like nobody ever remembers Heart of the Legion or that it gives you stubborn when you're on an objective. Based. So yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, no, actually you passed that because you're stubborn. Really? I'm like, yep, heart gives you the feel no pain, which everybody, well, most people seem to remember. And then uh, then you get your stubborn on top of that. So, yeah, no, I'll, I... I'll always try to, like, you know, if, if I don't know for a fact that a rule works like a, like a certain way, I will look it up and, like, yeah, let's make sure before we, you know, go too, dark, too far down this rabbit hole. Oh, I think. Each one of us here has definitely like cited a rule that doesn't work the way we think it does. And you know, and sometimes our opinions on how interactions work change. There's been FAQs, like, you know, there's been whatever. There's they, they, it changes, but like you know, my my point earlier was just that the the gut or the immediate reaction to that for most of us is we just go check and we talk it out. Sure. And like, that's, that's good. That's the way the game is supposed to be at the end uh -huh. of the day that like this game is extremely complex. I mean, hell even magic, the gathering, which is one of the tightest rule sets that exists because it's fucking made by lawyers. Like people still question interactions that have been like codified for the last 20 years. Like you're going to have questions, but how you how you go about solving them or finding solutions for them like that matters a lot. And, you know, there are interactions that happen that don't have rules to tell you how to do it. So really, all you can do is, yeah, they're not clear. They're they're unintentional, but they nonetheless exist. So you just do your best. You make the you make the decision that hopefully makes the most sense at the time and you try to just move on and then maybe go back and research it later when you've got time but like most everyone is pretty darn agreeable with that yeah which and I, I just that just goes to the you know professionalism of the player base which is yeah. just i mean that's that's just a really nice place to be but like all all of that to say that i think that the uh the community is in a good place. I think that the, you know, I think it's got room to grow. I think it's going to continue growing, you know, here locally. And, you know, we've got another uh, narrative event coming up in uh, in February at the muster, uh, maybe one in December uh, as well. So, you know, I think here locally, I think we're doing pretty good. Um, uh, of course, I'd love to 
I'd love to grow it more, but I mean, that's just, that's always a, a slow burn. Wouldn't we all love to grow it just a bit more? Just a little bit, but it's getting cold around here, so it might not happen. Time, it's that time of year here in Virginia where it's, you know, four inches of jacket and three inches of the car hard underneath and you got to piss real bad at that porta potty. <laughs> but we've yeah. all been there. I don't know if anybody has any particular, like, specific thoughts about anything. About, like, oh, I tried this and it was pretty cool, or, like... Nah, I do have a shit. thought. I'm going to eat my words on something. Because um, since I started playing uh, Horus Heresy in 2018, I've always held that Phoenix weapons are absolute ass. And they're, that they're garbage. I mean, back then they and, probably were. Yeah. And, uh... Well, I mean, they didn't change a whole lot across editions. Um, getting rapiers was kind of fun. You had a one-headed version of the Phoenix weapon, but and uh, well, I guess they did because they got Murder Strike now, which they didn't used to have. So the addition of Murder Strike has made them definitely worth it. You're still fishing for sixes, but man, do those sixes hurt! Yeah, they do. And just being I six on a charge with the spears is just stupid. The I six, what I think they're strength five or six. Yeah, uh, uh five, I think. Five. I think yeah. so. So I'll eat my words. Phoenix spears are actually useful, and I think every squad that I take at this point has a phoenix weapon in it, at least one. Well, I think my, uh, I think my big um, opinions on where heresy has gotten over the last year, honestly, hasn't changed a lot from. Uh, what I said about it last year, um, and that's a good thing, I think. But my, like my key takeaway is like everything feels playable. There's not a lot that feels just bad and unusable. Yeah. Um, other I than think. Other than, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but, but you're right, but the I think that the like, one thing that Heresy 2.0 has continued to do is it's it's kept the mid game real juicy and it's leveled out the 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 super highest high overpowered bullshit from one and most of the really shitty low level stuff there's still some some high points that probably need to be tapered off like last cannons um and there's some low points that need to be bumped up like fenrish and wolves <laughs> And attack bikes. And attack bikes. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely yeah, agree. Better characters. Let's just yes. Bikes. Let's just call a spade a spade. Bikes help. I think yeah. bikes aren't in a terrible spot. I think they could be better. I think, I think they, they overdid it. Somebody got somebody who wrote the 2.0 rules had a buddy who played White Scars, and he was like, you know what? Fuck him. Next edition. Yeah. You yeah. can't convince me that's not what 100%, that was. Hundred percent. Somebody, somebody on the rules team got bad touched by White Scars and never forgot about. I don't disagree with you, um, but yeah. But overall, I think you know uh, everything that I have continued to play like, and you know, I've I've tried other uh, other armies. It hasn't just been my my space wolves, and even when it has been my space wolves, I've changed those up a number of times and you know sure. used other other units. Um, honestly, the main reason I don't try out more is just because you know my time is so limited. Um, but everything that I've played feels good even my solar ox which are definitely underpowered compared to legions i can still win with them and i still feel good playing them yeah 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 i'm, I'm looking forward to get my militia on the table at some point because that'll like be like the heresy on hard mode right like oh yeah if i can if i can beat a legion list with mortals then it's like hell yeah Bro, my let event, me tell you, it's a magical feeling. My eventual yeah. heresy is going to be great, or my eventual Mishalisha redo is going to be astounding. Um, so I, I will definitely play you, uh, play your mortals with Layman Rust, so that you have the opportunity to take him down. Uh, once I get 190 um, flea riders, I will absolutely play Layman Rust. I'll just throw 190 flea riders at him, see if I can't bring him down. I don't think he'll bring him down because only like 
nine of them would be able to attack at a time. But it would be worth trying. Like, I, that would be really fun to try. Let's give them all you the need, Melta Spears. You need oh, God. Some more of those guys. I have some. The ash waste oh, I, I definitely do need more Melta. I do need more of the uh, Flea oh, Riders. Oh, boys. Because, uh, like, I just got the box because it was, like, what, Ben? It was, like, 75% off, so it was, like, 30 bucks. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was it, it was super cheap. And I'm basically losing money not buying this box. Yeah, true. I mean, you can always use more terrain, right? Yeah, uh, definitely. That's yeah, why I, I bought did, those boxes, was I for the terrain. The one table, I played Jason on the one table at Call the Arms that was, like, all the Ash Waste, like, Ewok house terrain. Yeah. That <laughs> was pretty cool. The theta I, pattern, whatever. I loved that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a good table. My uh, favorite piece of terrain is still the the Dukes of Hazard ramp. Yeah. I gotta. I have got to go back and uh, fix that uh, since it uh, took a tumble out of uh, uh, Emmanuel's car going, oh, you know, no. 60. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was that was a hill that Will made for the Ispan three event. If I, I think so. Because the full Grim and Ferris are supposed to fight on top Ooh, of on it. Top, yeah. Ferris got his absolute dick kicked in. Some people, you it's, know, it's funny Grim, that you like it because some people hate it. I like it for driving Land Raiders off. Same. If you have a Land Raider at the top, it's the exact right height to ram something at the bottom of the other side. Uh. Eric and I had a duel of fates uh, dreadnought fight at the top of that hill. Yeah, we did. Time. I yeah, jumped my and then we kissed. up there and charged it. <laughs> Based. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, but, um, yeah, no. Uh, so, so I'll go back on something that I've said before and talk about how uh, I have come to an understanding with the gentlemen at the outer circle. Oh, uh, at least it's one gentleman in particular. Uh, uh, Maka is not as full of shit as everybody says he is. Having, I told having, you. Act, having actually listened to, uh, as I mentioned, I've listened to I of Forest, which I don't normally do in that particular episode. They had Maka on and I was like, uh, fucking, I guess I'm going to skip this episode, but, I was driving to Prince Edward, and I had an hour road trip, and I was like, well, I don't have anything better to listen to, because I didn't realize that End of the Death had come out at that point. So I was like, well, I'll just fucking listen to the podcast and see where it goes. Um, I don't know if he's matured a little bit, or if he just isn't as salty as everybody always said he was, but like, he, he was he was spitting some truth. And It's definitely was, a bit of both, I think. Um like it was, it was just kind of about like self-regulation in the game and like the ecosystem of your meta and like getting new people involved and like, hobby burnout and like how to keep a positive mindset about the hobby and where you are with it. Like I was like, wow, this guy is not not as much of an asshole as uh, I was led to believe, or at least based on my prior experiences with him. So. Sure. One of the things, um, it's funny you should mention that because I kind of stepped away because they did about a year straight there. It was right about the time that you were, had a really bad opinion of them where yeah. like every video was kind of a downer. It was like, man, they fucked this up at GW. Man, they fucked that up. And I'm like, okay, skip, skip, skip. They actually did a little bit of a rebrand like beginning of the year. And they're like, yeah, we've been a little bit maybe too salty. Like you guys have already heard our opinion ad nauseum. Let's try to focus on Let's make the game better. But, uh, yeah, so that, that was a recent revelation. But on that topic, one of the things they were talking about is, like, self-regulation. And, like, he's like, all else being equal, literally every Legion list could be as strong as every other Legion list. It's just slight, like, you know, up-tuning and down-tuning that goes on beyond that, like, core list build. So it's like, you know, you could... You can build a dog piss Imperial Fist list. Like, Imperial Fists are not inherently broken. It's just, if you need it, right? Right. So, I guess he plays Salamanders. He's like, you know, I I could I could build a strong Salamanders list. Like, I could, you know, 
pretty much completely ignore my Legion passive and still build a strong list with them. Like, it's not like they. The city is talking about like doing like a tier list of the legions and and like I still kind of roll my eyes at that a little bit, but at the same time they explained it in the sense of like. We're, we're talking about like all else being equal, the, the like the highs and the lows of like you know excesses and and shortcoming. Sure. Yeah. Which okay, fair, fair enough. But, yep. um Yeah. So, uh, you know, I haven't really gotten to play much with anything other than my blood angels, but they feel like pretty middle of the pack, I'd say like nothing. Yeah, I think they're in the middle. To, they can definitely be overtuned if you make them overtuned. It's like anything can, but I think right. overall they're in the middle of the pack legion. I agree. Yeah. Like they, they, they can be, they can be extreme, extremely good. Right. Like if I, if I skewed hard into like the day of revelation and like heavy deep strike spam, <laughs> with like no scatter and you know all that kind of bullshit like you know but like I, I've always thought that was a boring list to play because it's like very one dimensional and you know oh, yeah. I fully fully cognizant of the fact that you know I chose the wrong legion to not want to play mass <laughs> drop strike jump infantry but you know, it always just kind of seemed like a boring list to play. So, right. So I'm trying to branch out and play some different stuff. We'll see how the termite list goes. We'll see how this uh, just lots of boys on the table word bearers list goes. Well, and we all know that you do like boys. I do. You like, like lots of men's, lots of men's on the table at once. I don't think Jake was there for that, was he, Ben? <laughs> no, no, he just likes boys. He just likes boys. I just like boys. <laughs> I will uh, say something I learned over the last year of games because I've gotten probably the most games in the last year that I've gotten ever due to some schedule changes in my personal life. Um, my assessment I had made at the beginning of the year that running Maru Scara and abusing the shit out of the plus one movement and just always choosing to come in turn five is... 100% justified and um, Emperor's Children do make better white scars. Maru scars, baby. Yeah, man. Just put they that one really do, and them. that makes me sad. Tactical squad and reserves and just let them sit there. So and it, the whole army gets plus one move and free, free based. It's even worse. I've just put like a for, I think, around the same point, I just put a neutron blaster, uh, Saber in reserve. <laughs> Say turn five, thanks. Yeah, it is about a hundred points, isn't it? It's like one twenty yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And just yep. Take the neutron blaster to the face off the side of the table, guys. Very, very Bam. end. But until such time, plus one movement. Bam. So Add all my charges are fucking plus one. <laughs> so I've had a uh, a recent revelation and this might just be a, a thing on my end. I don't know that everyone will agree or disagree. In fact, I think Ben and I have talked about this already, but like... If, if you go on another rant about Dozer Blades, I'm just turning you off. No, Dozer Blades will not <laughs> appear in this <laughs> at all. But um, I, I feel like there's, and maybe this is just a feeling I have, that there's a stigma about Lords of War, at least locally, that like, oh, you don't, you know, they might be a bit much, and you, you definitely want opponent's permission and say, hey, I'm going to bring a Lord of War. I don't think that that's true anymore. At least, like, if it, if it was last edition, it isn't now. Um, I played with a couple of different Lords of War. I mean, I brought my Titan to a couple of games, and, I mean, yeah, that one you say beforehand, hey, I'm bringing a Warhound, like, prepare yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and you very easily can do so. Um, but I've also, uh, you know, we just got recently got, uh, rules for demon engines, including the chitin demon engine, which I have one of those. So I brought that and I played against both Ben and gray with that thing. And it lasted two turns. Both, yeah, both but I times. shit my pants the first turn. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's normal for you, though, right? No, I Just usually hold it to the second When you, when you turn, don't take but, your medication. I mean, and the chitin did kill a lot of my guys. It, it, in its when it exploded, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say, like, when I Yeah, there's that, the and then the... the um, and then yeah, also had faced, in the same game, one of the games that I brought my Warhound, Gray had brought a knight, and I... Had, it was really lucky that I did so, but I ended up one-shotting it turn one with a single Melta Predator. Like, yeah. they're, especially with the absence of Armored Ceramite in this edition, like, they're tough, but they ain't invincible, and I think a lot of the scale back in weaponry, like, especially, like, the Typhon, number one, it's not a super heavy anymore, um, yeah, and the, the it's Typhon not EP2 fucked. anymore, I think. Yeah, Although it is brutal hammers. four and rending, so I mean that's not yeah, nothing. Dread hammers. Yeah, they did like a pro twelve. Lowered a lot of the AP across blast templates in the game, which is, yeah, uh, they did. <laughs> yeah, so I think game. like yeah, fucking show up with a Lord of War. I I feel like Primarchs might still be a thing you want to talk about first, just because they're I, not I, just. I would agree with that. Big beat yeah. sticks. They're like real force multipliers, and they change. A lot of how an army works for the better. Generally, you can't get a lucky one shot on a prime army. Yeah, he's yeah, going to be embedded. Uh, but yeah, like bring bring some Lords of War. I I would maybe not do it to a, a guy who's never played Heresy before. And maybe if you're running like an event that is you know catered to newer players, then you, maybe you don't want them. But in general, like I don't think they're the boogeyman that at least I interpret our local community has made them out to be. No, I I I'd agree with you now. Like I don't have a problem with them. I I think it more falls on the whole uh, the pregame conversation. I think that that's just I think that just needs to be a common courtesy no matter what definitely and like not only like <laughs> let people know kind of like what you're kind of thinking about bringing but also have multiple lists like be willing to talk it out ahead of time if someone does have a problem like hey i really don't think that i can handle that yeah then be willing to be like, okay well let me shift up a little bit Maybe this would wouldn't have been a good com or a matchup otherwise. Like, yeah, maybe I feel no, like I that's think, true I for think... anything though. Not not just, like if you show up with three contemptors, like maybe some people are going to be fine with that, and some people aren't. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with saying, "All right, well, let me take this other list where I don't have all that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe just, if I... you bring three contemptors, you get carried out the, into the parking lot, Arnold Schwarzenegger style. I was just what did I do wrong? Why? <laughs> yeah, oh, you know what the, you uh, did, Ed. You know Falchion, what you did. Because that's like the one su I, I haven't finished building or painting yet, but it's like the one super heavy I have that I always wanted to paint with bloody. Yeah, I, I can't even take that in 2500. Is, is the what? Falchion. Falchion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I want a glaive so bad. I don't think it's justified being 700 points, but yeah. they're really but, cool. Um, yeah, along yeah. those lines, um, I don't know that Dreadnoughts are the boogeyman that they were. Like, I, I think this community's done a pretty good job of self-regulating that. No, they are They are 100% the boogeyman that they are. We've just, we have locally tempered it. And we we have also just kind of naturally brought the proper amount of anti- Dread not to deal with any one yeah. other player that's not going yeah. crazy town. In fairness, I have not, I have yet to play a full Fury list that like goes full ham into yeah. the actual Dreadnoughts. They are point for point, I think, the best unit in the game. Probably, yeah. They just uh, they they they, they have no downsides. Yeah. They're reasonably tough. They are. They've. Uh, they've got a good amount of wounds. They have a. You know, the best armor save, a reasonable. Uh, a reasonable and vulnerable save. They're. You know, they have a built-in immunity to instant death, and they can carry great weapons that can threaten everything in the game. 
and yeah. for the low low price uh, oh and they and they get a bonus to their charge just out the gate actually speaking of that though they do have one downside and now they don't have frag grenades you know what? Sure, I'll I will put that as a pretty notable con, but the amount of people who don't realize that is high. Yeah, like I have I have witnessed I I I, I really made someone's day unhappy at uh, called arms when I saw them charge with a dreadnought and they were just they charged through uh, difficult terrain and they. Didn't realize that it dropped them down to initiative one. Yep. I don't. I don't know what the outcome of that charge was, but he was real damn surprised. I mean, that kind of kind of didn't know either. That kind of swung the balance of the last game that I played locally. It was a dreadnought charged at my dreadnought through terrain and uh oh. Supplies. Uh, yeah. I mean, parking a unit of scouts with melt bombs and a fucking difficult terrain just to beat the dreadnought to charge them. It's the way to do it, though. Come on. You know you wanna. Come on. Yeah, definitely. I think dreadnoughts are probably if not the best, they're like... If not, no, I'm not saying that there aren't better. better. Yeah. I, will, I guess game. I will say it, it events, like bigger events, both Nova and like Pull the arm. The number of us I've had to play that have a Spartan pull the fuck off, a ten man last cannon team with a Cognus Signum and a Leviathan Dreadnought is like disproportionately high, I feel, for games overall that I get to play. Sure. But, you know. I think the Leviathan's really kind of taken a bit of a well, downturn yeah. in this edition. They're easy to ignore. Like, they're easy to, like, kite around and, like, kind of. Yeah, Leviathan, the, just the. The drop from um, the four up and vulnerable to the five, I think, really, yeah, just Hurt fuck them. them. Yeah, they're just too slow. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that they're heavy yeah. and they can't run, so their first turn, their first, usually their first two turns, they're nearly unusable. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will say I don't see. And I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I'm surprised I don't see more people drop potting them because then. See, yeah, so I used to. It's just the way that the drop pod rules are now. Like, I don't know that you're getting much more out of that than you would just. I mean, there's the chance for you to get something real good out of it. Otherwise, it might be turn turn four by the time my guy shows up. That's true. Uh, yeah, unless you like dedicate a master of signals for that purpose, which you yeah, should. That's the thing though is like so many, so many lists already have that motherfucker in it anyway. Oh yeah, they put it in their fucking last cannon team. That's like okay, like, fucking pod your Leviathan. Also, because my uh, my dreadnought drop pod is still in pieces after I loaned it to a, another certain local, who shall not be named. Well, I think we're talking about Jack. best units in the game. I think the, uh, what is the, the special console for the Space Wolves is probably up there. What, uh, as best unit? Yeah, one of the best units as far as just efficiency. Yeah. Gee, Billy, would, why does your console get to be two consoles? Uh, he is more expensive. But it's still two for one. The fact you're getting two for one is ridiculous is where like yeah he's expensive he's not the price of two consoles and he's not two or sword slots no nope, but you uh, you only have to kill him once I, yeah. I still think the uh imperial fist cast down as a beat like just giving heavy support squad blind yeah no he's Oof, really yeah. good. what the fuck that's Why? really high up there no yep. no the they are good but i i I I was saying that like there there are better you individual units, but everyone can take a dreadnought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As far as just generalist yeah. units, sure. Yeah. yeah. Me me saying they're not the boogeyman. Like, uh, I think a lot of people were really worried about them. 
being driven on abuse, sure. Yeah, and I don't know that that's really panned out. Like, yes, the potential is still there, and I'm not saying that. But, like, I, I think that think might be one of those things. Like, the gentleman's Where's agreement, it? I think. The community kind of self-regulated on that. Like everyone said, uh, really before the edition was out fully, hey, look, man, I will carry you out to the parking lot and execute you if you bring five dreadnoughts to a game. <laughs> yeah. We all universally said that to each other, including people who had five dreadnoughts saying it to other people, going, hey, don't, don't do this to me. And we all just kind of collectively went, yeah, I guess we're not going to do that. I've got my yeah. uh, Blood Angels Leviathan sitting up on my shelf right here, getting ready to get painted. Up. Oh fuck! Speaking of Leviathans, fuck, I got a shit. I forgot to mention this entirely. Talking about hobby progress and things I was working on. So, part of the uh, custodies that I had purchased, their uh, <laughs> portion of it was all second hand. Um, from a, a local who had moved and then he was, you know, moving again, I think like overseas. So he was offloading some stuff. Um, so I got some real cheap Venatari and then just for free threw in a Telamon that was all magnetized and painted up. And, uh, as it has, it happened, I needed to rebase my Leviathan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going. Behold the biggest flex that one may have in a regular old game piece. Yeah, that's right up there with. Bob Hold on, I can't like even Bob see that. Hold on, show me again. Oh God! Use a telemod's fucking basing material. The whole telemod. Look at how adult that shit is. That's almost like uh, it's almost as bad as the buying the reaver head just to have your knight standing on it. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, buying the entire Indominus box just for one plasma pistol arm. Yeah, but that's not basic material. Like that's a that's a different. I mean that's that's. A yeah, you're actually getting real use out of that plasma pistol you're arm. The actual value out of that <laughs> plasma pistol arm. I mean, it it definitely has a great value as psychological warfare. Definitely does. I know I've seen a, a couple of people like, oh yeah, this is the ultimate flex, and like buy like a Legion Leviathan, just have another Leviathan stepping on it. It's like, mm, no. I don't know, man. I think Tomahawk's got your feet there. Now, I've seen people do like, I feel like part of the flexing as far as putting an expensive mo model on the base. Is that it has to be equal to or more expensive than the model that it's on the base of. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wish I could tell you how much Telemon costs now, but that fucking website. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, there are people who put, I don't know, you know, a Spartan, and they'll build it, and then they'll buzzsaw it in half to stick it underneath the foot of a Warhound. Well, the Warhound's, like, six times the cost, so. You know, you say that, I actually have... A Spartan sitting right over there in pieces that's uh, getting ready to get built into a terrain piece because uh, it's like an old recast one that I have that just like fell apart over time and uh -huh. nobody wants it because like why would I take a shitty old resin recast Spartan when I have a nice new shiny plastic one now that's like not cancer to build because that's that's an old one because it's got like the fucking individual tracks oh on. yeah oh man looks looks it's rough man so like it's just it's just gonna get split up and terrain. but like there Too silly. oh man but yeah i mean does anybody else have any thoughts or are we just rambling at this point which like i'm all for but i mean other than I will uh, also admit and concede the point that just about everything except for the um, Riot of War and Ultramarines is um, borderline busted, possibly entirely busted. Yeah, okay, I've heard so people talking about Logos Noctora and like, oh man, it's like the best thing ever. I could get like fucking weapons. Six, no, it's seven. the worst. It is the worst like, threat of war in the game. I'm like, I don't... Yeah, I don't see it. But, it actually might be worse than New Legion Hereticus ones. By just a little bit. But, the, 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 the trade-off is that I get 
some of the best units and best war gear in the game. Oh, here. yeah, can can we talk about why the fuck Loki Tara's storm squads have artificer armor? You're yeah. so mad about that. I am upset. Seething. Seething yeah. and coping. Oh, no, no, you're I you're, know, you're not the coping. opposite of coping. Yeah. You're <laughs> See. I'm pretty sure I saw some hair fall out. You're starting to mauled over there. <laughs> Bald as hell. Seed, seed, sneed, and feed, formerly soaps. <laughs> 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 on camera. Yeah, so like my traitor ultramarines list that I have written, that I think I'll do it some this is the idea, but like, I think that has a, a Locky Taurus squad yeah. or two in it. Dude, they're worth. I thought they were booty butt, and then I ran them, and they're fucking worse. I don't know yeah. what about this stat line in Warrior makes you think they're booty butt. <laughs> like they're I, I, I'm they're fucking assault assault Sometimes when Gray says things, things are booty butt, I wonder if he's dyslexic. Well, it's more like <laughs> so, you know what? Maybe like... maybe he just loves booty that much that it's or a good know, thing. He, he did the math, and the calculator said boobs. So he probably is like, oh, this is bad. Well, so well what I mean by it was I was like, okay, it's a power sword squad. And I didn't have, at the time, I didn't have a very high opinion of power swords, which my opinion of power swords has improved over the year. Dude. And it was like I was looking at them compared to suzerains, and it's not fair to compare anything to suzerains. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's never a fair comparison. Other than, like, fucking, you know characters yeah so literally an entire squad of fucking centurion it's literally a squad of characters so it's 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 tough to compare anything against them but like loki taurus did work there was not a situation i put them in or a game where i was like man i really wish i hadn't put them there it was like nope they're exactly where they need to be Killing things. I don't care if they die. They're going to kill a shitload of things on the way out. Doesn't matter what they're up against. Yep. There's a good did. chance they don't die either. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's power swords for you, right? It's like, and they're good. Yeah. They're really and they're, good. Oh, and they're, they're even they're even better than power swords. Yeah, because aren't they like murderous straight? No, they're they're swords? rending five duelist edge. That's what it is. Rending Jeez, five duelist edge. Sure. Uh, so do we have any closing thoughts? Um, Heresy is in a good place. Uh, got some really exciting releases, hopefully on the horizon with a plastic army and some maybe some new rules. Uh, but just you know, continue getting games in, have fun, don't be a dick. Yeah, agreed. Uh, my closing thoughts are: chlamydia, PP hurt real bad. Uh, don't touch your wee wee after eating hot wings. Yeah. <laughs> And as always, roll piss. Roll piss. Roll piss.